Let's play some Sentinels. Ah, oh, pickle fans, come on. Oh, you've been quoted out of contacts. You must be a famous person now. I am a famous person now. But we're gonna win. Unless the environment kills us. See, I could have waited and We have damage, Dread Warlord boss! I did not think that would work out, but it did. Well done, team. Woo! Good evening, everybody! It is Tuesday, it's seven-ish, so that must mean it's time to welcome you all to Sentinels Live! Thanks for joining us around the digital tabletop while we play... What game, Mike, are we playing tonight? Oh, he's still working stuff out. John, what game are we playing tonight? <laughs> Sorry! That's okay. Sentinels of the Multiverse! Sentinels of the Multiverse! Thanks for joining us around the digital tabletop while we play Sentinels of the Multiverse. The goal of these streams is to have some fun while showing you how to play the game as well as covering some strategies that might help you win. Handelaber does believe in civil rights for all and in being as inclusive as possible, so comments or activity that actively work against that goal will be moderated. You have been warned. If you enjoy the show, please do like, share, follow, and subscribe, and be sure to check out the other shows right here on twitch.tv slash games. we got Dolphins Dive Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, Tales from the Archive Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, and occasional developer shows where you can actually watch us Make the sausage here at Handle Albert Games. You can watch John write some code. You can watch John Mark make some music. You can watch Jennifer make some environments. All kinds of fun stuff. So tonight, we have a special guest. Some of you on Twitter saw that uh, we have a special guest tonight. And that gentleman is Mike Laidlaw from a little company you might have heard of. They're not quite as big as Handle Albert Games, but they're working their way up. They're called BioWare. Hi, Mike. How are you? Very good. How are you guys? I am wonderful. So good to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mike comes to us tonight because a couple of weeks ago, um, someone asked on Twitter, hey, I'm looking for like a digital tabletop game to play on the plane or something. And he said, oh, I'm playing this game, this game, and Sentinels of the Multiverse. And somebody, one of our diligent fans was like, hey, do you know that this guy who made Dragon Age is talking about your game? And I was like, <laughs> I don't. Let's go find out what that's all about. <laughs> uh, and so tell us a little bit about how you sort of got to know Sentinels and how you came to be a fan and, and all that stuff. Yeah, so uh, pretty pretty kind of fun background. The uh, uh, PAX East, probably four four years ago, maybe. I, I was out with um, a friend of mine uh, who worked from well at the time worked for Volition. Uh, he's another creative director and and literally the most energetic person I know. A guy named Steve Yeros, who's like just ah, enthusiasm embodied. Uh, and while we were talking amongst many, many other subjects, uh, Sentinels came up and he basically just said, it's amazing, you need to play Sentinels of the Multiverse. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I wandered over to the uh, Greater Than Games booth, which is the card version, uh, and basically just bought the lot uh, and said, you know, like I love cooperative board games and that kind of stuff. So I said, you know what, just bring them over, and put them in a pile, I'm gonna take them all home with me. Uh, ended up having to check a bag as a result, <laughs> and uh, <Nice. laughs> I've enjoyed it ever since. It's been been amazing. That was around kind of Shattered Timelines, it was before the villains and stuff expansions. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm just such an adherent of anything co-op, and the uh, I, I love, 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 love the superhero hook. Awesome. Someone in your chat is saying that your audio is not working. Is it? But the audio is coming through on the handle average. Yeah, it's screen. coming through on the handle average. Okay, screen. let me try that. That probably fixed it. All right. Too many buttons. Too yeah, many. We'll find out in 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so, yeah, so Mike's going to join Drake's us. And he's gonna... My stream was there in my first game. That's worth calling out. Oh, nice. Awesome. Okay, Octus is working again. Thanks, guys. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, so Mike's going to join us to play some Sentinels tonight. Um, and... Uh, Obviously, you know, I, I was a little bit joking about the whole little old company called Bioware. Um, I've been playing the Dragon Age game since the first one. I love them. I've played Dragon Age Origins uh, six times <laughs> because there are six Origins. Uh, I've played Dragon Age 2 a few times, and I have played through the vast majority of Inquisition. I don't know that I ever quite finished because I think... Inquisition is a vast majority. Yes. Like, it's a big game. <laughs> and I think that really what happened was Fallout 4 came out, and I was like, all right, I don't... <laughs> You know, the, the 60 hours a week I need to put into a video game has to go to something else now. <laughs> and I think that's basically what yeah. happened there. 
that's the problem with the enormous RPGs is you get you have time for about one every six to eight months, and that, then mm-hmm, exactly, and right. that's it. So it was probably good. Witcher came out in May, you know, so you kind of had time to move through. Well, and you know, I never even got into Witcher because I was like. I was so deep into so many other things at that point. I was like, you know what? I can't even afford to put time into another one at this point. So I guess I'll just have to wait for the next Bioware uh, RPG to come out. And as a matter of fact, I've actually I bought Mass Effect 4, and I still haven't played it because I've, uh, for various reasons, I think it came out at the same time as Horizon Zero Dawn and the new Zelda with the Switch. And so it was like, oh, what do we do? So <laughs> anyway. Well, Jeremy, yeah. if you've played origins only six times that means you haven't tried all combinations of races and right <laughs> that's true i've not played all combinations that is very true. fake gamer boy, fake gamer boy. Man, what's wrong with me i, I, ha- I haven't played it six to, times uh, Katie, so. to mr herder for following just like now so thank you for that all right, a couple more quick show notes that I wanted to mention. As you guys can see on your screen right now, uh, the soundtrack for Vengeance is now available. Ven- Vengeance shipped actually back in December, but it took us a while to get the soundtrack out for a variety of reasons, which I won't get into here. But if you want to check out the latest and greatest from the soundtrack from our amazing Jean-Marc, go ahead and get that. It does ship. If you buy it from Steam or Bandcamp or uh, Handelabber.com, it comes with the stems to create your own villain theme song, uh, which is super awesome. So check that out. And as long as we're talking about soundtracks, I did want to mention that the next listening party is coming up. Right now, the plan is that we're actually going to start the stream an hour early next week and do the listening party for Villains of the Multiverse. Uh, So set your calendars for 6 p.m. next Tuesday. I believe it's the 13th. And uh, we're going to do the same stuff that you've come to expect from our listening parties. You'll get to hear the music. you get to look at the new artwork um, and just sort of get get your groove on to all the new cool stuff. And that's what's going to be happening next week. Uh, so there we have it. I think that's all my show notes stuff. I might have had something else. If I forget, I will bring it up later. But uh, well, already... I would like to say, oh, go speaking ahead. of other new things, I think we can officially say that Villains of the Multiverse is coming out soon. Uh-oh. He's invoked the famous <laughs> soon <laughs> TM. Those are risky, risky words in software. <laughs> yeah, our, our fans know what we mean Watch out. when we say soon. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, mark your calendars for soon, everybody. All right, so we've introduced Mike, but as you all know, I'm Jeremy. You can follow me at Mr. J Handel. That's M R J H A N D E L. And joining me, as always, is John. Where can people follow you, John? Uh, you can follow me at Migrant P on Twitter and various places. It stands for Migrant Programmer. All right, and Mike, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, probably easiest would be Mike underscore Laidlaw on Twitter or exactly the same thing on Twitch. Right on. Uh, and, of course, you can always follow the company at Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, as well as uh, Handelabra Games right here on Twitch. As we are the developers, you can always be sure to get some insight into the process and maybe even see some stuff before anyone else. The game does include a tutorial, tutorial that covers the basics, but we always do our best to explain exactly what we're doing when we do it and why. And depending on how long it takes for us to win or sometimes lose. We often play multiple games in every two-hour episode. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, as well as PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and always in good old analog cardboard and ink. Check out sentinelsdigital.com for more info, and to download and try the demo, absolutely free. And if you do already own the game, we would really appreciate it if you could rate and review us on your chosen store. That really helps. And in fact, I've been asking about that for the last two weeks, and you guys have risen to the occasion. So thank you so much. We've been getting tons of new reviews, tons of new ratings coming in on uh, iTunes, on Google, uh, on Steam. So thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. It helps immensely in terms of getting the word out um, on this amazing card game that we all love. Hey, we just got a subscriber. Yes. Oh, that was the other well show done. notes thing I completely forgot. So, yes, um, you might notice there's a new button on our Twitch page, and that is the subscribe button. Because, as someone was asking about last week in the chat, we are officially Twitch partners, which means you can subscribe at a rate of four ninety nine a month. Uh, what that's going to mean, we're not really sure yet in terms of what cool extra stuff you're going to get. But um, it is very exciting for us because it means that, a, number one, we can earn a little bit of money from the Twitch channel, which is fine, but more for us, it's about being sort of in the rotation and being one of Twitch's sort of blessed partners so that we can hopefully continue to get the word out about Sentinels. You guys are going to get invited to all the cool parties. All the cool <laughs> parties, exactly right. Thanks all right. for subscribing, Cytosine, and yeah. the Forsaken one. We should have a little bell that we ring or something. Ding! Good times. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are Maybe in Virtuoso of dances. the Void, number 48. All right. 
And because we have a guest, we've decided that we're going to let him choose what we're playing this evening. Uh, I think we're going to start with a single villain uh, for game one and maybe move into teams for game two. Um, but who do you fancy taking on tonight, Mike? Uh, let me think. Villain-wise? Oof. Uh, we could we could go... Maybe Akash Buta, if I'm saying that right. Ooh, Akash Big Buta. elemental. Oh, we haven't played that for a while. We haven't played that yeah. in a while. That's a good one. All right. And yeah. environment, uh, we'll leave that to your choice as well. Uh, remember, we do have four new ones. Well, three new ones for people who subscribe to season two. Uh, we've got Court of Blood, Fantastical, uh, Madame Mittermeier's Fantastical Festival of Conundrums and Curiosities, and Magmaria, which we've showed off a couple times. Uh, I don't know how, when the last time you played any of those. I mean, obviously, you probably have villains on the tabletop, but not in the digital game. I, just. You know, I don't think I've played any of those, actually. Uh, they're not in my regular rotation, so. All right. Uh, so do you want vampires? Court of yeah, Court of say, Blood, I think. Court of yeah, Blood? That, right. sounds, that sounds pretty red. Yeah, say, and then if we lose, we sparkle. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Actually, I'm just really interested to hear what you guys did with the music for that. Because you change the music based on the environments, don't you? That's exactly Everybody right, yeah. And, and in yeah. fact, that's that's what the, uh, you know, the whole um, listening party next week will be. Everybody out there in streamland's first exposure to the new music from the coming uh expansion but yeah john mark has made new songs for court of blood for magmaria for um madam mittermeyers and of course new villain themes for the whole team mix thing uh which should 10 be 10 new nice. mixes yeah 10 new so mixes do we, do we have the music in for court of blood now or we is don't. that coming later that comes in later oh yeah, we, well, maybe it'll... we should do one that has the music then uh, i have music that can play cool? in the background although i guess it won't come out on your end Either way is fine. Either way is I can make I can make music happen over here too. So let's do let's do that because I'm really curious to see vampires. So yes. we'll let that win over music, and then it'll be a nice teaser for when you guys do your listening party. Does that seem fair? Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Jay ZC who also subscribed and subscribed before because that little star icon. I didn't know what that means. Now I know what it means. Ooh. Oh. We can apparently, Jeremy, make our own graphic instead of the stars. So that yeah, we yeah. have, yes, that we have is on our thing. list to do all the graphics and things. So. It was actually on my list to get that done today, but I had too many other things to do today, so I didn't get to it, unfortunately. But there will absolutely be custom graphics as well as custom emotes that will be coming. Just drop out the game for a sec here and pull this music down. There we go. Sorry, back. Nope, you're fine. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you first pick of heroes tonight as well, so... Oh man! Because um, we know how to treat our I'm, guests here. I'm, since the first time playing with you guys, I'm going to start as I uh, as I started my very first game, not realizing <laughs> exactly how the Nemesis system worked or how much that would hurt. All <laughs> right. Well, if you're going to be doing that, then I'm going to choose Chrono Ranger, which is um, oh, the nice. second hero I ever played in a physical game of Sentinels of the Multiverse. Fanatic in Court of Blood is very thematic as well. Indeed. Uh, she is. In the artwork of many of the car of the cards. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, and I'm gonna pick knife. I was gonna mention. Uh, I was gonna ask Jeremy to change his icon in multiplayer because he hadn't for several weeks, but now it's actually relevant because it's knife week on Blooders page. It so is. <laughs> it is the <a> slow burn. <laughs> nice. All right. So game one tonight, we've Perfect. got Akash Buta at Court of Blood versus a team of Fnatic, Corona Ranger, and Knife. Let's get started. I'm looking forward to it. Just ready, ready up, and we're good to go. All right. If my music mix is too loud or too soft, please let me know. The natural order is one of chaos. Flee and fail, you temporary beings. Repent, evildoer. You cannot stand against divine might. Why Fanatic is from the 1930s radio area era, <laughs> I have no idea, but that's what I chose to do tonight. <laughs> All right, so Fnatic opens up with Absolution, Chastise, Divine Sacrifice, and End of Days. Corona Rangers got two Displaced Armories, a Temporal Grenade, and the Ultimate Target. And Knife has got two Battlefield Experiences. Battlefields Experience? Battlefield Experiences. <laughs> she has multiple Battlefields of Experience, and then she has several Primed Punches. All right, so let's see what Akash Pata has in store for us tonight. Absolution, you are called, and absolution, you shall deliver. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. You can kind of in asynchronous. I click through her, uh, her hit there. Yep, yep. All right, so she played right. Earth Sacrifice, which does nothing, which is fantastic. Uh, destroy three, yes. three hero ongoing cards, which is nothing, and discard as many cards in the top of the environment deck as cards destroyed by this card, which is nothing. So there you go. Boom. 
Yeah, definitely. So, so Fnatic's got an end of days, which is awesome. Um, for, against Akash Buta, but obviously probably not right away because she doesn't have anything for us to end of Daisy. End yeah. Of, end of Daisy. <laughs> end of Daisy. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I forgot about that one. Yeah. That's that's her her her. Friendly apocalypse is per that a good way to describe it. Yeah. Yep. That is a very good way to describe it. Three targets. Probably don't want to pull that in now. Chastise here. Yeah, that Seems... one actually can't be played right now. Yeah, and then or... it looks like I'm bringing Absolution into play. Though it's a shame I'm not hurt, but that's okay. The power is too good, isn't it? I'm very yeah. happy to have uh, to have your advice, by the way. But I'm thinking Absolution is pretty much my only real call here. Yep. I would probably play that. It gives you one more yeah. damage, so. There we go. And then you're going to have okay. two powers to choose from, which can yeah. be handy for a fanatic. Melee fire, radius cards, damage type, one target, three damage of that type. Well, we only have one target, so that sounds really good. Uh, click below to confirm. Yeah, this is probably the the most cushy Akash Buta opening I think I've ever had. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, like no limbs at all is very yeah. rare. She's not to weak with. to anything particularly right now, is she? No. No. No, so we'll just hit her with some fire. Yeah, I think like in this target. game, it's just going to be the vampires are weak to radiant damage, so... Oh, well, conveniently. Yeah. I can help there. Divine focus, nice. All right, so let's see. What do I want to do here? I don't obviously need that uh, temporal grenade yet. Although, ultimate target might not be a bad play here. Well, I've got Kelly in my chat noting that Knife is cute. <laughs> Not my character. Not my character. Right, She's right. the badass. Yeah, do I want to get an equipment out or do I want to get a bounty out? Yeah, I think I I'm going to get it. What are you going to say, Describe John? Fanatic as cute at your own peril. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I'm going to get out that bounty, get my plus one damage on against the Kashpata. Speaking of badass, who has seen Wonder Woman? Oh, it was oh. so good! There, a hand signal yeah. for Wonder Woman, like make a W with your fingers. W, -W. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I was just commenting to, to Krista, aka Drista, today that like it's not going to happen, but the marketing department has already got their job done for them for Wonder Woman two because it's W W I I and it's Wonder mm. Woman two. Right. By taking her back they to said, World War One, they set up the they sequel. They said they're perfectly. not doing that, though. I know they're not, and that's what a missed opportunity. I know it's a perfect yeah. setup, too, right? Because, like, oh, you know, World War Two comes around, and it's, you know, being caused by some other god, or Ares again, or whatever. But, you know, they want to bring her to the present. That's okay. Yeah, it was... We're up to the current cinematic universe. It was fantastic. Yeah. I, I Honestly, I cannot wait to go take my daughter to see it. She's 11, and I think she's going to absolutely... I got a real kick out of how, I don't think this is a spoiler, Wonder Woman is the secret protector of the Louvre. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get Prime. I, I, could, I guess I could get both of those Battlefield experiences out. I don't want to use them yet because I want to take advantage of the damage boost, but if Kash Buddha destroys them, then so be it. Energy Lance. All right, Court of Blood brings out Relict Doratoya. Let's pop her open and see what she does. Oh, before that disrupts the field. Oh, gets rid of her. <laughs> That's all right. I'll, <laughs> I'll back out oh, and bring wow. up real quick. All right, so... Well, farewell, Doratoya. Yes. Uh, <laughs> increase radiant damage dealt to this card by one, as all vampires do. And at the end of the environment turn, this card deals each non-vampire target one infernal damage. Thanks for subscribing, Leo9981. Nice. Gotta love those subs. Indeed. The 981st top. Okay, so Leo. It's it's not asking me to destroy a card, is it? Yeah, this or is actually I? pretty much just the order that we're choosing. Oh, okay. Which actually right. can matter. Voting, yeah. Maybe because when my card is destroyed, things happen. So let's do that first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So I get overdo it, which has a penalty at the end of my turn, but I could play it here out of turn. Ah. Uh, nice. To 
take advantage. So, oh, it's also an ongoing oh, cool. turret. Though. It's gonna get destroyed. That was a bad decision. Let's. Oh try. dear. Let's rewind. Oh, backing it up. Okay. I'm. That's just a misplay on my. I forgot that there was. It's just well, three ongoing cards, right? So if you play another ongoing card. There we go. It's just gonna get caught up in that. Yeah, oh, it's right, like because it'd be one, two, and then the one you just played would get nuked with it. Yeah, it's like end yeah. of days. So I could avoid it by playing another copy of Battlefield Experience first, and then <laughs> destroying that, which will get to the third. But I'll play something else. Okay. Or I won't play. Uh. Yeah, I don't think incidental contact is worth it actually. So I'm just gonna skip. Just gonna speed up my animations a titch. Get a little closer to you guys. So, who would you say is your favorite hero to play? Like, who do you play most most often, Mike? Uh, let's see. Really enjoy Bunker, um, just because of the modal stuff. Amazing, amazing flip over there. Um, ooh, infecting an air. Um, look at the limb. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Probably Bunker, Bunker and Fnatic would be probably my two. Um, yeah, yeah. Have you tried the t Termination variant of Bunker? Uh, I don't think I have, no. It's really cool because it, uh, basically what it does is uh, it lets you uh, play a card, use a power and draw a card during your power phase. So you can use Ooh. it to like chain your modes in really interesting ways. Right. Yeah, well that sounds awesome. Um, so she nukes ongoings not habitually. It's only when that card comes up, right? Yeah, it's just that uh, just dis disrupt the not disrupt the field, but her sacrifice, which mm -hmm. are both played now. I right. think there's no more copies, so ongoings are safe now for a while. I uh, I'm looking at divine focus, but it feels a little early for that because all because I'd have to start discarding, wouldn't I? What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, Akash Buta is so lousy with hit points that yeah. unless there's, like, a ton of limbs out, um, yeah. you're going to blow through your debt, your hand pretty fast. Yeah, that's what I'm a little worried about. So yeah. I, think I'll, I think I'll just stick with that. So I will skip playing a card because everything else is very big. Yeah. And then we will just get in there with Absolution and confirm. Oh, wait. Uh, it's clicking on the green that confirms it. There we go. And Radiant just for kicks. Yeah, because sometimes there can be more than one power in that box, so. Right. Uh, what do you guys think? Rock Slide? Three damage? Uh, Seems yeah. pretty good. I yeah, hitting, I uh, usually focus on the limbs unless there's like yeah, a really specific it. reason not to. Yeah, it's hitting everything one projectile damage, so that seems... Yeah. Horrible. And that will, you know, that damage you to the limb basically gets turned into damage to a cut yeah. later. So. Yeah, once it's wiped out, right? It transfers over? Am I remembering that right? Yeah. Yeah, when it's destroyed. The vampire with the highest HP deals a non-vampire target with the lowest HP two melee damage. Okay, so that that's a, that'll hit the limb, right? Right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Right now, definitely, and in most cases. There's no think. vampires out right now, so it's not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I think I'm going. Oh, we got a raid down my side. Thanks, Cipher. Much appreciated. The small but mighty raid. The best kind. <laughs> Indeed. So we'll hit that lot rock slide again for one. <clears throat> and I feel like I might just second displaced armory. Oh, I don't, I don't, I, I haven't played Chrono Ranger enough. I didn't know what Jim's hat does, but I like it. That was another one of those, yeah, like, actually, I think the stream taught me how to use Jim's hat. Um, uh, because, like, I'm, I'm pretty typical for, like, because I haven't played Sentinels on the tabletop as much as a lot of people. One of the reasons we made yeah. the video game was because I don't have a gaming group to hang out with, and I just love this game, and I wanted to play it more. <laughs> and so I play right. Sentinels most of the time by myself, so I don't get a lot of learning experiences. And so John likes to teach me on the stream on Tuesday nights by asking me, what did you just do? <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. Sawbar's uh, asking if I have any particular strategies for Bunker. Um, I think it's mostly get a giant pile of cards underneath Bunker and then fire them all at once. Yeah, with the Omni Cannon. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> Whenever possible. I mean, being able to churn really quickly with his modes is, is good. And I think it's really about the stance control with him. That's, that's pretty much being aware of where you can move your character to is the important bit. 
All right, I am pretty happy with how I'm setting up Chrono Ranger. Just hopefully nothing will take all my stuff away. Yeah. Again. So you guys were saying it's the week of ninth. What's the what's the what's going on here? Lots of lore. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, you know Christopher and Adam from Greater Than Games now do a weekly podcast where they talk about um, a hero or a villain or an environment or a scenario or a team from Sentinels of the Multiverse. Uh, if you go to the letters page. Dot libsyn.com, I think. We can maybe find a link to that and throw it in the chat. But um, basically, it is um, them telling all the stories that they claim to have told in comics, but with comics that were never actually published. <laughs> and right. so, if you're curious about, you know, where certain quotes came from or how certain story elements happened, that's where you learn it. Is the letters page. And this week is uh, knife. Last yeah, they go into not only just the the history, like the the in universe stuff about the characters, but also about the publication history of, like, the editors who worked at Sentinel Comics and the infighting they had over storylines and like different issues that got split off and like there's another like there's many levels of their world building, which is kind of fun. Indeed, yeah, they have put way more thought in this than you might have thought. Thank you, Evil Dice Monkey, for the link. I have now copied it over. In there chat. it is, yeah. Chat. Yeah, you should bring up Unhallowed Halls there, Jeremy. Why don't I bring up Unhallowed Halls? That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, let's have a look here. Non-vampire targets cannot regain HP. Targets cannot deal radiant damage. <gasps> Increase all infernal damage by one. Hmm. So anyone who can choose their damage is in a good place right now, but... Uh, and the environment we... background for that panel is that card. So oh, yeah, look at that. Synergy! <laughs> I like it. I like it. We had to ask That's Christopher right. and Adam, like, how does that weird pool in the Unhallowed Halls work <laughs> so we can <laughs> render it in 3D? <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. Like, using blood magic, clearly. That's yeah. the only way it could work. Uh, let's see here. So it feels like I could kill the Rim Living Rock slide, or let's see here. Um, and Chrono Ranger cannot deal damage. Yeah, that's what I'm a little worried about there. Um, okay, what have I got here? Wah, play a wah. card. Yeah, I don't even know I if you want to pull on a play well, card. I can't again. do Radiant. <laughs> I actually kind of want to skip because I, the, I've i got the one that does multiple targets. I could have gotten one to each limb and a cache, but uh, that's unfortunately Radiant damage, which cannot be dealt, right? Yeah. Yeah, so skip that. And I guess we're doing Absolution again. Um, yeah, because Absolution, and... you can choose a different type. Yeah, I think we'll go fire into the rock slide. Take that out. Nice. Unless one of you guys has an easy, like, one point of damage. In which case, I'll hit the brambles so I don't waste the two. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, obviously, because Chrono Ranger's kind of oh, stuck yeah. for the moment. Yeah. Do you want an incidental uh, contact? I feel like it, it seems like an overkill for what we're trying to get done here. I want to save up the incidental contact for later when there's yeah. a whole bunch of limbs. Okay, so I'll just whack the rock slide then. Yeah, I think hit the rock cool. slide to make sure it goes That's, away. That strategy. But yeah, I mean, if we could have, like, not wasted those two damage, that would have been nice. But still, there you go. Ten in your face there, Living Mountain Lady. As I often say, if we lose by two, then we know what happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but All right. it's more complicated in this situation. Yeah, so I wonder if... Yeah, I can't use that. I can't use that. You know, I'm just going to get Dead or Alive out, and I'm actually going to put it on the Brambles. So that should give me maybe one HP. Oh, right, I got a second card play. Oh, but we can't heal right now. Oh, yeah, we can't heal right now either. Yeah. Yeah, with your Temporal Grenade, you could destroy that on how it all. Yeah, all right. Bag it up. All right, we'll rewind. I got John, John, you didn't say your catchphrase. I think friends. I have a crush on the agent, Agent Paige Huntley. Yeah, she's pretty badass. Oh, so hit rewind, Mike, and start oh, a turn. Oh, so sorry. Sorry. Undo has to be unanimous. John didn't say his catchphrase. <laughs> I, that wasn't a big enough drift to say my catchphrase. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> There's a part of me that actually wants to burn that eye on the prize, even though I can't deal the one damage just to draw an extra card. But one damage. I'm actually yeah. going to hold off. I'm going to tell Oh, it draw, play. then play, yeah. Oh, but I still get an extra card play. Right, Jim's hat. Yeah, we're doing this. Good old jam. I can't deal the damage, but I can get my no executions. You definitely don't want to play no executions. Yeah. Because it prevents the, them from being destroyed, so they don't 
cause the extra damage. Yeah, that's fine. Right. We'll skip that. You don't want to play Dead or Alive? Nah, we can't heal right now, and I understand that I'm about to destroy Unhallowed Halls, but we're fine. All right. I mean, the bounty's out. It's good for you. If we lose by Chrono Ranger being needing to be healed by one, we know what happened. Or yeah. healing. <laughs> yep. I thought you wanted to deal damage, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm going to save this Prime Punch as well. I'm yeah, Mike, what he's talking about... Punch it. What, what he's joking about there is that my entire strategy for Sentinels is deal all the damage right now. Okay. And and John's First, strategy yes. is understand how every card works and therefore make the best possible move at any given time. And sometimes those two things come come to loggerheads. <laughs> there can be synchronicity there, though, at times. It's like the best possible move may be dealing all the damage. Ooh, an angry mob. One we have a good question here for Mike in our chat. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, how do I have an opinion on Sentinel's ending? Because the creators always had a finance story to tell. It's better to go out when you originally planned or keep going while still able to produce new and exciting content, not the original plan. Um, I think, honestly, uh, so if you had a plan and you were going to build to it and have an absolute ending, which I think Oblivion absolutely does, I think it's probably best to say, okay, we're, we're going to be done. Um, wow, it's damage coming in. That's that's probably a good call. That said, if... Um, if you're at a point where you say, "Wait a minute, this isn't this isn't kind of dying out. We've got a bunch of new mechanics," um, uh, and and you know you think that you're honestly being kind of fair to the fans by saying, "Hey, we want to do one more thing, or we're going to do an epilogue, or something like that," that can be really good. But I think knowing Christopher, he's got a plan, and probably the company wants to focus on something new, right? There's a point at which developers get a degree of fatigue. They've been working on the same thing long enough that they start to be like, "Okay." The juices aren't there. I'm not as excited by this day in and day out. And when that happens, um, even if you think you're still good, you may not actually be good. Like it's hard to know because you're deep down. So I would say if that's their call and they kind of feel like that's a right call, they've been doing Sentinels a long time. It might be time to move on to a new art style. It might be time to move, move on to just some subject matter. So yeah, that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Christopher has said many times that like, and I may be paraphrasing this incorrectly, so and I'm sure someone will correct me if so, but he, what he considers his role in the world to be is to tell stories via gameplay. That's what he does. He is not a game designer, quote-unquote. He's a storyteller who just happens to use games to tell his stories. And I've heard him say this explicitly. A story is something that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So if you try to, you know falsely, you know, extend a story beyond its natural endpoint, you're not really a storyteller. And I think that's yeah. what, you know, they're luckily in that they're getting a little bit of the best of both worlds, because as was seen with the sort of Sentinels of Earth Prime Kickstarter that just happened, you know, Sentinels as a me as a game mechanic will continue, even if the story of the Sentinels of the multiverse is coming to an end. Uh, not to mention yeah. the fact that, you know, they've got the Sentinels RPG, they've got the Sentinels... Um, or actually, not, yeah, Sentinel Tactics, which is now called Prime War. Or no, something. it's still Sentinel Tactics. Oh, it's still Prime Sentinel War Tactics? is the new ex expansion. The, the next new, expansion. the next expansion, sure. Um, but yeah, so they, you know, he's he's. Uh, if there's one thing that I absolutely respect about Christopher, there's many things I respect about Christopher. There's one thing in particular that I think rises above the rest, which is that I think when it comes to this idea of telling stories. Um, he absolutely knows where he's going and is willing to do what he needs to do to get there. Um, and, yeah. you know, I've, I've seen that time and again. You know, he actually came to town to stay with me to go to see a concert uh, like maybe six months ago. And we had some deep conversations about the story of Sentinels and how it came to be and where it came from. And, I mean, he's a storyteller first and foremost. And I think that that is just amazing that he can, you know, really stick to it in that way. Yeah. Yeah, and every time I talk to him, you can tell he's thought it through mm -hmm. very, very intensely. Uh, so we can do... Uh, so I'm, I've emboldened myself so I get an extra turn, or I get to, sorry, an extra power each turn uh, at great personal expense, because that's Fanatic's <laughs> jam. Uh, but it does mean I can basically do three damage and then two damage, so I'm going to hit uh, the Brambles to take them out as well. Cool. Little melee, yeah. and then one more radiance, so it takes him down to five. There we go. Get some Any, more. Anything at two damage is going to get killed by the angry mob. So yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking with the mob out there. And then right now we have this. So now I can choose whether or not I want to take this and have another turn like that. And I think I'm going to take two radiant damage just to Good keep call. him bolding up. Yeah. So, so that, that that's another thing that Christopher I've heard say, which is that like if you still have more than ten HP, just take the damage. You know, like, <laughs> you don't need all those. It's always keys. worth it. You'll need one. 
That's all you need is one. Exactly. All right. So let's see here. Uh, Fanatic is pretty lousy with cards. How is Knife doing? Should I just do my job? I think that's good because you have the hat, so you can... Uh... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, load myself up and then see what I see what my options are. Ooh, so sorry, what is going on? We draw X cards, X equals... Yeah, we're discarding cards right? so that uh, to power up the Chrono Ranger. Um, one target, one projectile damage. Yeah, so you you don't have to discard, but you can if you want. I you could card probably, card. yeah, I could lose. I've got two divine focuses, foci, if you will. So I think I'm <laughs> going to do that because I get to draw a new one. Is that the idea? No, uh, he, no, just Chrono it, Ranger. You discard oh, one you? so that he gets to draw an extra card. Do you want one? More? I do. I think that's pretty useful because he's playing two a turn. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. Enjoy. All right. Enjoy I, that. I don't think you need no executions. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of no executions. And I don't want to discard a card for you, but I will. Because I'm nice like that. All right, I got so I've got some folks time. on my chat asking, what, what's going on? Why do I have an early stream? Well, the fine folks at Handle Abra Games who are also streaming at twitch.tv slash Handle Abra Games uh, invited me along to say, hey, if you're into Sentinels, do you want to play some Sentinels? And there's very rarely a time I say no to that question. Awesome. Um, you know, I'm on my way to the hospital. Maybe. That might stop me. But even then, I'd be like, just come along. We can do this. <laughs> just put it on your phone. Stream from your phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if they got Wi-Fi on my iPad, let's do this thing. Yeah. Periscope and an iPad. <laughs> yep. All right. I can still cannot deal damage thanks to that ensnaring bramble, so I'm just going to skip my power phase here because I don't think either one of these can do anything. Oh, you yeah. have the lowest HP. That's why. Uh, yeah. I'm tied with you now, so we can choose. But... It's all right. I gotta buy any means on Akash Buta, which is awesome because that means even her self damage from her limbs will hasten her doom. To, oh, yeah. to quote another card, I'm gonna make sure both of these go away, which is why I was priming both fists at the same time. I'll Wait, pop so if you want me to look mom. at uh, Dragon Age cosplay, you just have to send it to me on Twitter, and Lord knows I'll retweet it probably with a comment along the lines of "sweet" or "wow, that's cool," etc. Nice. So yeah, go for it. They're talking about how the angry mob is raging over RPG, me RPG mechanics changes. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, the I will say tactical cam is insufficiently tactical. Since you mentioned. Um, Dragon Age again. Uh, I will say that I think the characters of Dragon Age is the thing that kept me coming coming back to that game, even after I was almost like I, you know, I I coined a phrase for myself back when I was playing Fallout 3, which was Fallout fatigue, which I tend to get when I play those long, crazy, huge open world RPGs because it's like there's just so much to do that I typically get tired of it but what kept me coming back even after i was almost fatigued was like wanting to find out what was going to happen with the characters i mean honestly i think morgan is probably one of my favorite characters of all time not the least of which because she was voiced by claudia black who i love from mm -hmm. uh from mm -hmm. farscape but um but yeah that's one of my absolute favorite things about that world even more so than mass effect i mean mass effect is great but yeah, but the characters in dragon age is what kept me coming back for sure yeah, I mean, it's really kind of a, I think our secret weapon is to have, have them really, uh, really in place and, and have you care about them because I think we connect on a human level more than we do in a, in a high adventure level. I mean, both are important, but I think the characters are where, when I talk to my teams, I always say like, that's, that's the heart of what we're building here. So that needs to win. Definitely. And in, and in fact, I think, you know, that's something that I think Christopher and Adam also sort of take to heart with, with Sentinels, you know, like. They don't ever make a character that's like a token character. Like every single character they've created for Sentinels is a fully realized person in their mind. We might not know what that person is yet because we haven't had their letters page episode yet, but uh, but they know in their head. And I think that informs why each of these characters feels so unique and how they play and stuff like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because they've got a history and they've got stuff going on. They've got a nemesis. They've got mm -hmm. you know gear that's tied to their backs. Yeah. So, um, out of curiosity, the Angry Mob, uh, I did they destroy a different environment card? Oh, I guess they destroyed yeah, the we, air one, right? Okay, they didn't destroy I themselves. I voted for the infecting so. an air. Because okay, I just didn't choose, yeah. And I if, voted uh, for the okay. If a vampire had gotten played, then... Um, 
Right. Infecting an air would have caused trouble for us. Um, uh, let's see. The angry mobs we can kill, so if we want. Okay. They're actually yeah. pro they're probably doing more for us hitting the bad guys anyways than they're hitting us a little bit, but it's not too bad. Yeah. Especially with the by all means, which is increasing core damage yeah. to the other than mountainous carapace. Will that take the damage instead? No, it's just a reduction by one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where would you yeah, guys carapace think I should focus? Is, I usually try to kill the carapace if it shows up because yeah, damage reduction. I'm yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I have I have a number of tools that may do that. Uh, let's see here. I can draw a card. I could hit it. We don't have anything blocking radiant damage, do we? Uh, not right now. Not for the moment. No. Okay, so I think maybe I will brutally censure the carapace. Oh, I got, I got the Aegis for the resurrection. Nice. <laughs> uh, that'll come out next turn. Uh, then we're going to do radiant and melee damage to the carapace again. That's got melee fanatic. damage. And that graphic of the carapace has fanatic in it too, chopping away yeah. at Akash Buddha. I like it when you have you see the uh, characters in the game and that are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that are like fanatic right part of what's going on right now. All right, and then we're gonna hit the carapace again with absolution because that's a great sword, and I'm gonna go fire because I'm like that. There we go. Down Burn four. down the mountain. Ooh, a consecrated ground. Nice. Let's draw in some cards. Uh, I kind of want to do that high damage turn again. So we're molding ourselves. <laughs> I'm going to skip this. So actually, I wanted to ask, since, you know, uh, the people on our on our chat and our stream sort of know what everybody at Handelabra does in terms of, uh, you know, our roles in the company. Because we're a small operation at this point, mm -hmm. only six of us. But um, some of them might be curious what exactly a creative director does um you know i think one of us probably counts as the creative director but nobody actually holds that title at handle Lover games yeah. so so what is you know what is your what is a typical day for a creative director at bioware it just meetings it's yeah uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, so more specifically what i do is um uh i i mostly uh am, i'm i'm the guy in charge of the design team so that's the group that works on story the group that works on mechanics the group that uh, works on pacing, spacing, and encounter design uh, in the levels, um, those are kind of all my kind of team. Uh, so my job is to essentially be the vision holder for the experience that the player has, while my counterparts are like the technical director who makes it all go, and the artistic director who worries about all of the, um, the visuals, the animations, the cinematics, and so on, all fall kind of in his camp. So my uh, my day mostly is reviewing content, uh, working with my team to kind of like establish like what kind of goal we're trying to set. I rarely solve the problem so much as try to identify it and then say, here's the direction I'd like us to try and tackle it. Here's the experience the player should have. How do we get there? And then I look to my the lead level designer or my lead designer or lead writer uh, and say, okay, so what what would you do to to get us there? And then that's pretty much how they, they, they go through. So my job is very much vision only, and then any ancillary products like the comics or the novels or the animated film, all that stuff kind of comes through me for approvals and giving the authors and that kind of stuff guidance as well. Mm -hmm. Right, it's kind of like, take the ship over there, you guys turn the wheel and do whatever yeah. you need to do yeah. and do the sails, like do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, my, my job is to make them yearn for the sea. <laughs> to tell them how to cut lumber to build that boat, right? Yeah. Very nice. All right, so I threw a little bit of my damage at Akash Buddha, which was a mistake. I should have thrown it somewhere else. But should I hit uh, either the arboreal phalanges, or should I just take that carapace out at this point? Um, like, basically, knife, what are you going to be doing on your turn? Uh, I can take out the carapace. You should just whack. You have so much damage bonuses against Akash Buddha, you should keep hitting Akash Buddha. Okay. That's why. That was kind of what I thought, but because I had all those bounties, but I just wanted to make sure that all wow i didn't realize you stacked a third one on there that's awesome yeah that's plus one only for chrono ranger and then also the plus two yeah from, from hunter and hunted hunter and then whenever she deals damage he gets to use a power which is whenever we kill a limb he gets to use a power and keep hitting right. more <laughs> yeah awesome awesome so it's pretty great uh yeah i'm thinking battlefield experience will take out that carapace, so that's pretty good. And I might just play 
another. I, I haven't picked up any of my damage boosters, which is annoying. But I'm gonna yeah. just go with more Battlefield experience. So Monkey asks, so this is a co-op card game? Yes, it is. It is. Uh, basically, you know, the the villain. The villain decks are designed such that they play themselves, so they have sort of AI built into them in terms of how they play, and three to five players each take on the role of, of a hero, uh, and we work together as a team to destroy the villain. So that is what Sentinels of the Multiverse is all about. Ooh, I get to use a power. You get to use a power. How about I use the one that deals all the damage? Yep. And just so you know, Monkey, it is based on a physical card game as well, which was made first. Um, and this one um, is very faithful, like a remarkably complicatedly faithful version <laughs> of it where it does all the math for you. I don't know how you guys did that. Uh, and the, the other notable thing is it is multi-platform play. So if you have it on your iPad, you can be playing with or, well, with, because it's cooperative, uh, someone on the PC, uh, you can play over the internet, um, which is how we're playing right now. Exactly. You can yeah, also play solo. You can it's also play playing. Yeah, playing solitaire is how I play it the vast majority of the time. Uh, but yeah, as Mike says, you know, like one of our sort of goals as a studio is to bring tabletop experiences to digital in a completely faithful way. You know, our goal is to preserve the soul of the game and just give you a new way to play it. Um, that's sort of some of our, um, you know, sort of cultural watchwords there is like, you know, we're not trying to just license the characters and make a whole new game, although that is a completely valid way to go. Um, it's not to say we wouldn't someday want to make a cool fighting game using the Sentinels characters. But this particular uh, game is all about taking the Sentinels of the Multiverse game from the tabletop that is amazing and just giving you a new way to play it uh, on digital. So. Hey, Jeremy, do you want the second or angry mob to not do you six damage? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of damage. damage. <laughs> yeah. No vampires in play. This is the arc from the original game. Yeah, the, this is pretty much note for note the cards, including the text. Yeah, so there's actually like sort of three layers to that. So the, the the cards you're looking at when I pop one open full screen like this, where it says compounded bow, and uh, Mike, if you want to do that on yours, so you can sort of show what compounded the card looks bow, like. Yeah. Like so that yep. is that is a card as it appears exactly on the tabletop. The small version of the cards we designed for the digital game so that people could have a sort of shorthand for seeing them. Then there's the character artwork, which is actually created by the original artist. Uh, and it's completely original for the video game. He makes this whole, all new character artwork for the video game. And then there's the backgrounds. And the backgrounds are completely 3D realized uh, worlds that we create um, sort of to give you that sense of, of place. Um, yeah, so there's actually like sort of three layers of artwork happening at any given time in our game. And then there's music too. Which, and there's music, uh, yeah. This environment, we're not hearing its music because it hasn't been released yet. But. Next week, Secret. you should come this by. Is, yeah, this is a developer build, so we're not yeah. uh, we're not playing in stuff that's fully available yet. For yeah, we're doing a listening party for the music next week at six Eastern to hear the new stuff. That's always an exciting time. Indeed. Yeah, and so that's where you know, for those of you uh, um, you know who are new to Sentinels or new to to watching our stream, uh, Jean Marc, who is not only our primary engine programmer but also our musician. Yes, those two roles are handled by the same person to handle <laughs> our games. Um, he creates completely original music for every environment as well as for every villain, and uh, and he's really good at what he does in every sense of the word. But we always do these listening parties now where you can get a hear, get a listen to the music. Uh, unmolested by the game audio so you can just hear it completely clear um, before we release every expansion and so that'll be happening next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. right here on our Twitch channel. Do you have anyone at Bioware who is a music composer slash programmer? Uh, I don't think the two together, no. No, we've got music composers slash audio designers, but that feels uh, less of a dual class than just pure bard. Yeah, <laughs> very true. I, I imagine there's probably a few a few people who might do some scripting that would help it with their work. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. We we did have we did have a, a very technical designer worried about like memory allocation that kind of stuff, but he had a master's in uh, performance, I think, for the saxophone. Uh, came up from Australia, uh, and he did almost all the musical scripting for like our hardcore plot stuff. Um, cool. And so he's directly responsible for the really sad scene in Inquisition where a character dies, and another character tells kind of like one last story about them, and then we pulled that character's theme from the mm. second game forward and made you kind of sad. Nice. It was excellent because that theme was inherently sad. 
Uh, okay, we've got Entomb, which is three psychic damage. Guy, okay, that seems bad. Um, and then what do we have over here? I'm sorry, it's gonna hit me well. I want to see what this up with. So Judge Fico is easy to kill, and the hunter is probably gonna kill him. Actually, yeah, the hunter is gonna take him. Mm -hmm. uh, the hunter goes after the highest HP uh, vampire. So if another vampire right. shows up, he just switches targets, which is annoying. But, okay. All right. Uh, uh, we also so... have Entomb, which I would recommend someone get rid of if we can. Yes, so that one, uh, I can get an ongoing card or an environment card, so I could get rid of that. Yeah, and I have a temporal grenade, I... so I can get rid of that too, if, if you want to do other okay. things. Uh, I mean, the one thing I could do is get the um, uh, the restoration, right, to get the bonus 10 health for recovering. But that can wait, I'm not on the edge of dying, so. Or we could just clear the board with end of days. <laughs> seems, seems a little hardcore, but... Uh, actually, it's a, not a bad time for it. Yeah, it's not a bad time for it. I mean, I have my bounties there. out, which I wouldn't mind keeping. But honestly, given our current state of HP and how this game is so going, those bounties, I would that makes it so that I want not to play end of days. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can get at least one of them back. But I think that yeah, I think yeah, if we can avoid doing that. Uh, Okay, so I think what I will do then is uh, those bounties will cause a cash potato to do more um, um, stuff. So I think, hold on, let me see here. Oh, man, everything hurts her. Um, what if I did consecrate ground because then I'm doing some more like one points of damage too? Yep. I think that might be the one to play here. Um, okay, so I want to destroy in tomb. I think that's probably our highest priority for ongoing yeah so that's gone i support that decision yeah all right cool and then should i kill drudge fico or probably yeah or is Hunter i mean Fulton you have some after us you may as well like yeah he's yeah, not really think... that bad but he's gonna be in... and he's gonna cause damage from feast of flesh so well it right. is but hang on though isn't the angry mob gonna take that out all right, the angry mob would kill Judge Fico before. Oh yeah, you're right. The feast of flesh goes off. So, go good so, job, angry mob. So I could kill. Uh, uh, how about good Lenny's. job, Jeremy, for noticing something that John didn't notice? Nice. All right, make sure to use one of your damages to hit Jeremy. <laughs> nice. Yes, I can. I can. You can show all the targets, everything. Um, okay, so we'll hit the flanges. I'm gonna hit the mob. Uh, so let's confirm one for the mob, just to take them down a little bit in case we need to remove them, right? Uh, phalanges, two, and then, uh, it was Chrono Ranger I wanted to, no. Okay, now. <laughs> with all those bounties. So, Consecrated Ground by any means is a bounty for another plus one, so two damage. There we go. That's my card play. Uh, oh man, she destroyed my sword. That sucks. Uh, well, I guess I'll let Embolden go, because I only have one power. Yeah. And nothing else to play, so... Yeah. Uh, let's get rid of some uh, weird, creepy limbs. By punching them, and then hitting them with radiant power. There we go. The chat is Ooh, commenting on how Jeremy saw something that I didn't. I know. Are you You're okay? very excited. <laughs> Woo! Get rid of him, it's just, it's the power of my OG uh, Rook City shirt that is doing it. <laughs> old right. school. It's old school. I got that shirt. I have one too. I got it at a storage. It doesn't fit me, so I need, I'm need. i going to do something with it. So yeah, see, mine fits me again because I have been mm -hmm. eating healthy, so I'm back down to a, a weight that is more reasonable. I don't think mine has fit me. It was a little too small to begin with. So I'm going to hit Akash Buta for Evil five. Dice Monkey says, there are skills other than deal damage. <laughs> and attributes it to Jeremy. Uh, the the second one says, I'm sober for change. Well, maybe not entirely. <laughs> I may have had a drink that had Red Bull in it. So as a result, I'm a little bit more awake than usual. I'm surprised uh, you're not playing Fnatic because it would give you wings. <laughs> <laughs> Well Too played, easy. well played. All right, so, uh, all right, I played my eye on the prize. Do you know what I would do here now, Jeremy? Um, wait, let me see if I can figure it out. It's not going to be obvious. Yeah, no, I'm looking at what I have. Um, 
No, why don't you tell me what you would do? I would play a temporal grenade and use it to deal the damage and destroy Hunter and Hunted. Interesting. Why don't you explain to people okay. why that's a, a good idea while I do it? Yeah, I'm really curious about that. Well, the angry mob is going to hit you for a lot of damage, and probably something else the environment's going to do is going to hit you, and probably a Kashbuta. So, Hunter and Hunted is pretty dangerous to you right now. Ah, okay. I mean, you could maybe survive, but this seems like a good way to get a pile of damage out and then still not take the downside. All right, so round. would my third instance of damage go to Angry Bob or go to Hunter? No, Hunter's yeah, I would, on our I side. would still hit Angry Mob. Yeah, Hunter's on our side. So yeah, so let's hit the Angry Mob and then I'll use that to destroy. I'll show all cards. That's a button we don't showcase so often on the stream, but um, we default to only showing you enemy cards. Uh, when it comes time to destroy or to target, but you can always show everything because sometimes, as John is pointing out, there is a good reason to hit yourself or destroy one of your own cards. So I will go ahead and kill Hunter and Hunted, or destroy, I should say. And there you go. And now I've saved myself. I mean, come on, I have so many hit points. I have 14 you do have whole a lot hit, hit points. points, but you yeah. wouldn't. I don't. You might die. So it's. I don't know. It's There's not, a lot of incoming damage. It also lets me more safely play incidental contact. Yeah, and Akash Buta <laughs> is still has still has more HP than any other villain starts with. Right? Yeah, That's yeah, right. She still has one thirteen, yeah. and I think the their, the second uh, highest villain starts skill. with like a hundred, which is um, Omnitron, right? Yeah. Do I want to play incidental contact? Fistful of dice says the only hit point that matters is the last one. That's right. I'll play Incidental Contact. Do you guys remember the Van Helsing movie? I do. I, I, I do not love the Van Helsing movie, but I do love that the Van Helsing movie is like the, the best um, video articulation of hit points ever. Ah. Because you have uh, Kate <laughs> yeah. Beckinsale, like she's like swinging and climbing and she's taking me and all this kind of stuff. And then there's that final scene where like the werewolf hits her and like crushes her into like literally into a couch and she dies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like she was at full capacity and then out of him once. Dead. <laughs> she did not get to make any of that XP, unfortunately. That's right. That's right. The last hit point mattered. Uh, I'm just going to hit the failing Gs. This will die says the Van Helsing movie was actually the Castlevania movie. <laughs> yeah, it wanted to be. Oh, so actually here, the when the environment plays a card. I thought I hit the phalanges. Did I not hit the phalanges with my power? I did. Oh, maybe I maybe it was higher than I thought. That's fine. So in this case, we're choosing uh, just so folks can see from the interface. I'm choosing like choose for me, which basically says if it's good, it hit everybody. Then the game will just be like, cool. We're just gonna go down the line. And, yeah, uh, it's just faster. basically that that you don't care about the order. Yeah. But if you do care, like you're like, no, 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 this person has to go down because then their damage won't cause secondary damage. They have to go down last or something. Then you can um, yeah. you can do that. Or you want one to die very specifically first, right? And then it triggers another one, so less characters. I don't know. All kinds of stuff can happen. Yeah, and we've actually had lots of people contact us via, you know, like our support forum, like, I don't understand why there's so many buttons I got to push, you know, whatever. And, and again, just to sort of harken back to what you said earlier, because this is a completely faithful adaptation of the card game we need to give you the option to say that you know like on the tabletop there are some things that happen in the video game that are quicker than the tabletop but there are some scenarios that happen on the tabletop faster than than the video game and that is where we're, it's like oh everyone's gonna take three damage here all right let's all just do it and everybody sort of take their own hero and you know takes down their own hp uh but you know on the video game the the computer needs to know what happens and in what order uh, it, you can't yep. actually tell the computer, have this all happen at the same time and everything will be fine. Computers don't like that kind of thing. And so that's why we have the choose for me button, because then the computer just does it in the order. Typically, it's play order, um, and it just takes it all away for you, and then you're done. All right, so... Ooh, a choice. Just, Who is the highest HP? Yeah, so whoever gets hit is going to go down to 11 and then be tied with Chrono Ranger for the Brambles check. Uh... uh I could take it, because I, uh, I have the armor, so me going down is probably better, because I have a heal coming up later. Okay, 
And I think probably Crown Ranger is doing more damage than you. So we'll say Fanatic can't deal damage. Well, and yeah. the other thing I was going to say is that at this stage, it could be that Fanatic's strongest play might be End of Days. Yeah, with the number of things that just came out. Because yeah, the I mean, we've got... And also, yeah, the, the villain flipped, right? Yeah, she, yeah flipped. she flipped. So now she plays a card when an environment card is destroyed. Right. But actually, if you play End of Days, that will cause her to start like hitting herself. Like, play more cards and hit herself and play more cards than Yeah, herself. that's what I'm saying, is if we that. kill those environment <laughs> cards first with End of Days, maybe get even more limbs out, that could be really fun. All right. So, yeah, the villains, uh, for anyone who has seen before, the villains will flip. Um, they have two states they can be in. Uh, some of them flip every turn. Uh, some of them flip based on a specific set of conditions. Yeah, if you bring up the Akash Buddha's character card, there's a flip button so you can see both sides too, just like on the tabletop. Yeah, so she flips whenever, what is it, when the environment deck reshuffles, right? On her first uh, side, she yeah, flips. And, yeah. Right, so when, when the, the environment, environment deck. track is reshuffled in the environment deck, Akash Buddha flips, she may only flip once per turn this way. And then when the environment deck is shuffled, yeah, so it's the same on both sides here. Um, you know, other uh, villains, you know, like. Baron Blade flips when you take him down to zero HP, then he flips, he gets a new HP pool, and then you have to knock him down again. Omnitron flips every single turn. Um, Gloomweaver yeah. is interesting in that uh, Gloomweaver flips based on the relics, either in play or in the trash. So, like, there's there's a lot of um, variation in terms of how the villains flip. Yeah. So, right. uh, is it end of day's time? Are you guys thinking? Sure. Yeah? All right. It seems seems like it, there's an awful lot of limbs out there. So. Yeah, I mean, there's at least 50 damage against Akash Buta sitting in her limbs right now. Right. Based on my um, envelope math. Okay, so I have... I can't do damage, right? Mm -hmm. So I might as well just skip. Because my only power is do damage. Yeah. Ooh, I, I got I, a... Everyone, everyone gains one HP. I That's tend awesome. to do that damage anyway, even though it doesn't happen, because I like dealing damage. <laughs> you just want to... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm always like, I don't trust myself to know whether or not that's actually going to not deal damage, so I just hit the button to choose for me and wait to see if it actually works or not. All right, so let's see. I have two bounties out. I have a that are going to be in the trash here. soon. Yeah, they're going to be in the <laughs> trash be, as a result. So you want to get those hits in now? Yeah. So it looks like John's... Like, I guess maybe directly to a cash, right? Because everything else is going to get wiped. Yeah, I think directly dealing a cash buta damage is the way to go right now yeah i concur so this, this is, is again a, I'm, yeah okay discarding for jeremy to draw i don't know do you need anything too badly i've got a pretty good nice stack here if you're happy with everything you have that's fine just skip i kind of am actually there's a lot of really good stuff in there so i'm skipping Yeah, actually, so this is a, this is a fun little UI discussion here. The skip card. Um, we had a lot of internal discussions about, like, you know, again, same thing. On the tabletop, you know, oh, I'm just going to skip this. This is a thing you can say. But we were like, how do you visually represent that when it's like yeah. you can deal damage to all these things or you can choose to not deal damage? We were like, should there be right. a button? Should there be a thing? Like, we were like, just make it another card that you can select. I think that yeah. was John who came up with that one. And we use it for stop dealing damage. We use it for, you know, don't don't destroy a card. We use it for skip this thing. So, yeah, that was a fun UI thing that John came up with. That's a good challenge. All right. So we're going to go right against Akash Buta here. And then it means ultimate target. Minus one That's for the good. carapace. All right. So she's I love at one terrible old tech one. strike. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good... I love the names of a lot of the cards. Yeah. All right, knife. What do you got? I feel like I can't ever just say knife. I always want to say knife. For some reason, the K N makes me want it's to say K it. K dot N dot Y dot F dot. <laughs> yes. I have to say that every time. <laughs> knife. N dot A dot S dot A. Which is the space. Yeah. Well, she is an agent of F dot I dot L dot T dot E dot R dot. Right. I'm going to use this, and then I'll use Battlefield Experience's ability when it gets destroyed by End of Days. 
Yeah, it is is probably worth knowing talk about the cards as well. Uh, every every hero has a variant set of cards, like sometimes up to five or six, depending on how many expansions you have. And some of them are rare collections and, and so on and so forth that allow you to uh, decide what your starting power is and your starting kind of health, uh, right. which can be really interesting in terms of what effect it has on the core play, because that one never goes away unless you're dead, I guess. <laughs> yes, but even then, when you when you're incapacitated as a hero, the variants have different incapacitated yep. abilities. That's true. That's true. Because yeah, you can keep playing by basically helping like, each turn. You'd be like, you you get an extra turn, or you get to play a card. Yeah, it is actually very interesting the variant system in this game because you wouldn't think that just one card could change entirely the way that a deck plays, but it really does. You know, the perfect example is you know the card that was actually made for the digital game, which was the Super Scientific Tachyon. Do you have that variant? I do, yes. Yeah, so the Super Scientific Tachyon takes her base power from sort of moving so fast that she can see into the future, where she gets to look at the next card on her deck and decide if she wants to keep it or not, uh, to looking at the two cards on the bottom of her deck and choosing to either play them immediately um, or not. Well, it's not choosing. Or it happens. Not, yeah, yeah, so she experiments. Yeah. She, she plays them immediately. If they share a keyword, if not, they just get discarded. And right, just yeah. that changes so much the way that you play Tachyon, because all of a sudden now you're like, do I want to start stacking the bottom of her deck? If I'm playing with another hero who lets me put cards on the bottom of decks, like, you know, yeah. that hero might play differently now. It's just, it's really pretty pretty cool the way that Christopher designed those decks and those variant cards, yeah. Well, these, these mobs gonna be a, are just punching one another. This is a pretty crazy time. environment turn. Okay, she's just, this is happening all before, before end of days. Yes. Yep. Uh, all right. At the she, end of the turn, right? Yeah. No, oh, it's at the start. But uh, that angry mob was played before. Oh, before, so the I want to say before. Yeah. yeah. So it happens first. So now she's destroying all environment cards, which means for each one, she's going to play the top play card. A, of yeah. Play a new card. <laughs> well, I hope she brings out a lot more of her. Uh, I think. Yeah, she probably will. Yeah. For How cool would it be if we win? Oh, great! Here In tomb. Just like a 74 end of days round, that'd be pretty cat badass. Oh, but end of days is going to take care of Entomb, so. Yep. Yeah. All right, another Ensnaring Brambles, another Mountainous Carapace. Yeah, I think if we play this right, she's going to she's gonna kill herself here. And then All right, so let's her. destroy the Carapaces first. Carapace first, first. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And not the uh, not the bounties. Oh, Drudge Ficko, you're in for a rough day, buddy. <laughs> oh, Drudge. Oh, so this oh, is fanatics. This is fanatics' right. choice because it's your. Uh, yeah. yeah and, we... and I love that you can vote as like a cooperative kind of thing. Like here, man, here, mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> and then, okay. so there's an ordering here because they both care about what happens. But I think uh, the order won't matter at the moment. I think they care of this. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, this carapace goes off. Enemies, and they, so I think the carapace. other carapace. Should yeah. be next. Oh yeah. Uh, where is it here? There it is. Okay, I'll let the cameras go. So the environment deck's getting savage by those two. But um, yeah, so every time we're destroying one of these, the cash is taking the damage, right? Yep. Yes, she's Rebels. damaging herself. Yeah, and I think uh, it might be within like one or two HP, but I feel like we're like, <coughs> She's gonna almost kill herself here. Maybe she actually will. I'll be very excited. Especially with bio needs and stuff still in play. Yeah. Yeah. Again, so this Outside. is where we were talking about choose for me earlier. This is where order matters. Like if we had let yeah. it go off in just whatever order the cards came into play, those those bounties might be gone before they can actually help her kill herself. And we wanna help her kill herself. That's what we're <laughs> here for. Yeah. I really enjoy that uh, Cash Kuta becomes a hero, uh, mm. or yeah. is available as a hero in, I think it's Oblivion. Oblivion, right? yep. yep. Yeah, I saw that in the preview card, so that's really cool. So it's like a, a reduced, uh, no, I'm, I'm cool, I'm less angry now. Anyway, I'm now an elemental master, essentially. Yeah, they've talked a little bit about that on the Letters Page podcast, about how you know, the heroes that, or the villains that become heroes and why they do, you know, like uh, the matriarch yeah. is one who becomes the harpy. And, um, you know, it's about, you know, like, and Luminary specifically, like Luminary who's Baron Blade, you know, he's not necessarily yeah. a good guy, but he knows that like the end of everything is not gonna work out well for me. So I might as well fight on the side of good <laughs> as it were. Yeah. 
Uh, I think we're now at. Uh, we could just do choose for me, right? Nope. You one? want to destroy battlefield experience because it lets me draw a card and play a card. Oh, ah. well then, yeah. Yeah, I do. And I don't know if it's going to help me. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, Probably I mean, I can do incidental contact, but it won't be enough. So, uh, what's in her deck here? Phalanges and Primeval Eruption. Actually, yeah, I want to play Wrecking Uppercut, so she might only have Primeval Eruption on her deck, which reveals the top cards of the villain deck, and there's none, so it doesn't do much. Well, I like that. I like that image a lot. Yeah, so I'm going to play that. So you're playing that because you want to hurt her one more time, or...? Yeah, but also it just discards the top card of the villain deck. Ah, so, okay. And what did it discard? It discarded Phalanges, yeah, so... She's we she has one card left in her deck. We know she's gonna play Primeval Eruption. Right. Um, so I want to get rid of which is not gonna do anything because then two. she'd have to reshuffle, right? It's gonna still play the top card, but uh, it's not gonna do. And yeah, the order won't matter here now. All right, Allies of the Earth is gone. So actually, the feature to see what's in Just the villain deck is something that we didn't have at the start um, right. because and it's kind of an interesting thing because on the tabletop. Like, you can fit, and in the digital game, you can figure out what's left in the in the deck if you know what the cards are. Right. But yeah. uh, it still would feel like cheating if you were to look at it, right? Right. <laughs> but uh, in the digital version, we sort of I mean, we had a bunch of requests for it, and we're like, you know, it's something that's easy for us to do, and if you don't yeah. want to do it, you don't have to do it. <laughs> All right. So she ends up playing Living Rock Slide. I think we probably got this. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I don't know. We all have less HP than she does. It might be tight. I'm being silly. It's not really that tight. Uh, let's see here. Uh, could do Nova if we want a little bit of heal. Man, I wish that really guys... living rock slide was under four, so you could just holy uh, final know, that'd be it. lovely. Yeah, yeah. I love it when you can throw something into the villain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or or Dowager Alona, right? Um, uh, okay, what do you think? Holy Nova, maybe give us all a little more. Sure. Health? Yeah, not bad. Divine and Focus then... would be good too, though it always hits the highest, so it's going to alternate between the rock slide and Akash Buddha. Right. Film with the target highest HP too. Uh, I kind of, I don't know. What do you? I, I don't know if I want to deal myself four damage. So I'm thinking no. You don't. No, you don't. You don't it. have to deal yourself four damage. Uh, that's a, oh, that, that, oh, that's that'll tough. happen at the start of your next turn. So you get a whole round. You'll be able to do one, two, three, four, five instances of two damage if you have the cards, uh, which you do. So that's worth doing. Takes no damage this way. Oh, may yeah. deal herself for it. Sorry, I wasn't reading that. I thought it was must deal herself. Okay, then yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. All right, we'll pull that out for punching, uh, and then our power will be deal damage here. I'm thinking directly on her. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I don't see any reason sense. not to go right after her, given where she's yeah. at right now. Yeah, Darren twenty thousand five hundred says Luminary and Akashtria are not heroes, quote unquote. Uh, in that they are like they're not operating out of some like desire to help. Mm. They're out. They're more operating out of sort of self-preservation. Right. Yeah. I think as Christopher has said, Baron Blade is like he's not being a hero. He's just like Oblivion is destroying the Earth, and that's where he keeps his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So I'm he's, he's not okay with that. Chastise here. The villain with the highest HP, Blam, got the rock slide. Oh yeah, that came up. Um, where did that come up? I think it was on uh, Zach's stream last week. Someone was asking what hero cards don't let you choose the target. Um, there's very few, and actually that is one of them. Uh, Divine Focus. You have to like the target that it damages is chosen for you. Yeah. Uh, which is very rare. Uh, almost all the time you get to choose, at least within some class of targets. 
Okay. Um, so sorry, divine focus. Oh, in Luke Dolphin's stream. Oh, the start of every turn. Yeah, it's every turn. It's a really okay, good turn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, However, I would point out that because Akash Buta is down to three and the yeah. rock slide is at eight, you're going to be hitting. Uh, keep, keep 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 hitting it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Keep hitting it. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm going to take care of Akash Buta right now. So there we go. <laughs> uh, on my power, on my power phase. We're gonna win. The Harpy is a hero. Lifeline is willing to do anything for what he believes is right. And Stuntman is French. So Amani Nominee <laughs> says, so I have to say I love, uh, I lava this character's hair. Nice. Ami, I Ami is the punstress. And I concur. Yeah. You know, you know um, when it's below uh, the Earth's surface, it's called magma, but once it emerges, it's called anime. <laughs> Liquid it's hot face. magma. Liquid hot yeah. magma. Well we did it! Alright, so Akash yeah. Buta. Sorry, Akash Buta. Soon to be Akash Triya. Please join us. This is what happens when you try to take on the heroes. You should come to our side. That's right. Become a hero. All right, so let's let's uh, get game two going here. I think we promised that we would start that we would do a team game for game two, uh, yeah, and somebody sure. actually requested uh, uh, the citizens Hammer and Anvil coupled with misinformation. Um, so I will go ahead and, and uh, allow that to happen. So citizens Hammer Van and Anvil misinformation. Um, uh, Mike, why don't you pick the third one? Any of these? Ooh. We've got Baron Blade, Ermin, Friction. Fright Train, Proletariat, Ambuscade, Biomancer, <laughs> Bugbear, La Capitan, Greaser, The Operative, Playgrat, and Sergeant Steel. Quite a few uh, choices for that. La Capitan. La Capitan! And like we'll it. bring them up and go through them uh, for everyone's benefit. Yeah, while you guys choose your heroes, I'll bring them up. So Citizens Hammer and Anvil. Um, we've got Hammer, and then bloop. Oh, oh, hang on. I got to switch to the thing. Hammer, and then there's Anvil. So Hammer, at the start of the game, Citizen Hammer enters play Arson Arsonist of the Dawn Side Up. Cards are revealed from the top of Citizen Hammer and Anvil's deck until one position card is revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are shuffled back into Citizen Hammer and Anvil's deck. Uh, and gameplay. Citizen Hammer is immune to damage dealt by Citizen Anvil. At the end of Citizen Hammer and Anvil's turn, Citizen Hammer deals the non-villain target with the second highest HP to fire damage. I should also mention that Citizen Hammer is Adam, and Citizen Anvil is Christopher. At the end of the game... Oh, you're right. Excuse me, set up. At the start of the game, Citizen Anvil enters play Guardian of the Dawn side up. A hammer and shield is put into play, and Citizen Hammer and Anvil's deck is shuffled. Gameplay. Citizen Anvil is immune to damage dealt by Citizen Hammer. At the end of Citizen Hammer and Anvil's turn, if Citizen Hammer is incapacitated, Citizen Hammer's character card is flipped and restored to 17 HP. So what this means here, and this is important, is that you don't want to get to the beginning uh to the end of hammer and anvil's turn with hammer incapped because he'll just come back and go right to 17 hp and that is no fun for anybody no. yeah it's basically mirroring what happens in susan don's deck where anvil brings right. hammer back from the trash Indeed. yeah so this this uh this game mode i think probably worth for my my stream just explaining kind of the, the difference fundamentally if you sure. guys wouldn't mind so basically, uh, this is what we call, on the t on the tabletop, it used to be called Vengeance Mode, and now we call it Villain Team Mode. And what this basically means is that there are slightly less super-powered villains, but they fight in uh, conjunction with the number of heroes. So if you're playing a three-hero game, you got three villains to contend with. And instead of going hero, 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 villain environment, it goes hero, villain, hero, villain, hero, villain, hero, villain, hero, villain environment in terms of the play order. Uh, and we'll walk through that as we play. But so since we've got three heroes here, and actually they are kind of three heroes that you've seen before. Misinformation um, is, you know, here, here, Hammer and Anvil are part of Citizen Dawn's deck. 
uh, because they are citizens. Misinformation has her own full deck, and this is her team villain variant, which I'll read off now, too. At the start of the game, Misinformation enters play Reality Rewriter side up. Cards are revealed from the top of Misinformation's deck until two ongoing cards are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are shuffled back into Misinformation's deck. And then gameplay at the end of Misinformation's turn, the top card of each hero deck is moved to the bottom of that deck. Uh, and then La Capitan, who also has a full deck. At the start of the game, La Capitan enters play out of time, side out. Uh, excuse me, side up. Chiquito is put into play, and La Capitan's deck is shuffled. At the end of La Capitan's turn, if Chiquito is in play, La Capitan deals the hero target with the highest HP 3 energy damage. If not, Chiquito is moved from La Capitan's trash into play, and the hero with the most cards in hand discards one card. Uh, Chiquito one is an evil space monkey. Oh, evil. Super <laughs> evil space well, monkey. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and one of the other things that I did want to mention, because it is slightly different, uh, is that instead of having two sides, like most sort of standalone villains have, uh, villains in team mode have an incapacitated side the same way that heroes do. So, like, for instance, uh, Misinformation, at the end of Misinformation's turn, each player discards one card and draws one card. La Capitan's in-cap side is, at the end of La Capitan's turn, one hero ongoing card is destroyed, unless the owner of that ongoing card discards two cards. Uh, and then Hammer and Anvil have their own as well, which I'll get to into in a minute. Uh, environments. Uh, let's go I, with something... I have to say, I love Misinformation's incapacitated side. Like, wow. Yeah, the it, art it is, is really cool. It, yeah, <laughs> the, art, been there. the art is really cool, and frankly... Um, I don't hate her power, be or her her yeah. in cap power or ability, whatever you want to call it. Because the fact of the matter is, is I would say I could count on one hand the amount of times that I wouldn't be willing to discard a card that I have to get something new. Yeah. So yeah, that works out well. As All I recall, right. her her background is that she was like the administrative assistant of the of the kind of core hero group, and eventually like snapped. Am I remembering that right? Yeah. So yeah. the story behind that is that what happens with misinformation is that. Some kind of event happens where she gets to glimpse an alternate timeline. And in that alternate mm. timeline, something happens to Freedom Tower, and the Freedom Five don't rescue her. That's right, basically right. what and happens. And she is killed, but and she thinks that they could have saved her. Exactly. And so she decides, screw these guys. I'm going rogue. And that's <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so this, and so the original version of Misinformation, she doesn't really have a lot of powers. She's more like she's using her like computer skills and influence to do things. But uh, this version, this version of misinformation is after she has acquired some actual reality bending powers. Right. Um, and so she can sort of just will things to happen. Yeah. But in a kind of unstable way. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna so... try, I'm gonna try bunker just for kicks. I was yeah, thinking well, Jerry was gonna go with favorites. Super Scientific Tachyon works really well with Misinformation because she puts cards to the bottom of decks. Well, and I was mentioning how it was interesting how Super Scientific Tachyon changes the way you play Tachyon, so I thought that was a really good thematic choice there. Um, Environment-wise, what do we think? Let, let both chats vote. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so we need to, like, I don't know, have, like both chats vote and then have a runoff or something <laughs> all right so i just told or our just chat say, we to could pick two and then let and let the chats go all right let's see what we got uh, let's see vote for freedom environment tower. vote for environment we got a freedom tower rook sit the freedom Ooh, mdp some people asking for mdp amtron megmaria mobile defense platform yeah, mobile defense platform chat. wins on our chat yeah. And no votes in the other. Yeah, chat. my chat's my chat probably doesn't have the complete. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they probably don't know. Yeah, that's fine. Mobile defense platform is good. They're so still this awesome. Is, my chat's yeah, so awesome. this is uh, Mr. This is Baron Blades, um, mobile defense platform as its own realized environment. So that's fine. I think that is a good choice. All right, so we got Hammer and Anvil, Misinformation, and La Capitan versus the Wraith, Price of Freedom, the Super Scientific Tachyon, and Bunker on the mobile defense platform. Oh, Jay says, I don't know what's going on, but pick the cute one. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I didn't want to invite you. What are ready? There we go. I don't know what's the cutest environment. Probably Enclave of the Endling. Was it Blue Go? Yes, yes. Mm. It's full of all these. Definitely. Yeah. FPO default opening line. Don't stand in my way. I have no time for your games, says the Wraith. Yeah, this is what it, this is what we do when we don't have the actual written lines yet. We have the FPO. Right. Do you guys use FPO? 
No, we we tend to Laura Mipsum. <laughs> oh, Laura Mipsum. Okay, yeah, that yeah. that's a holdover from the fact that I used to work in the print world where FPO meant for right. publishing only, and so yeah. um, that would fall find its way into a lot of things. Um, we'll we'll tend to asterisk temp asterisk. We'll use that a fair amount. Oh, okay. Right. As long as you can recognize it and it doesn't slip yep. through, that's the main exactly. thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, the Wraith opens with combat stance, infrared eyepiece, stun bolt, and throwing knives. Super Scientific Tachyon has got Fleet of Foot, uh, Hypersonic Assault, and two Supersonic Responses. And Bunker has got a Recharge Mode Grenade Launcher, Decommissioned Hardware, and Adaptive, or excuse me, Adhesive Foam Grenade. Oh, going right to left. Yeah, I, I changed it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wow. out comes Cover Fire, which is the position. So the art chat shield. is excited about the artwork because we've been doing previews for the last few weeks without artwork without for these artwork, characters. Ah, yeah. oh, nice. And so, yeah, so it's new graphics of Christopher and Adam, as well as the <laughs> two ladies. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to pop this open. So Cover Fire is the position that came out. When this card enters play, destroy all other position cards, as all position cards do. Reduce damage dealt to Citizen Hammer by one. The first time Citizen Anvil is dealt damage each turn, Citizen Hammer deals the source of that damage to fire damage. And, of course, Hammer and Shield, which is a relic. Reduce damage dealt to Citizen Anvil by one at the end of Citizen Hammer and Anvil's turn. Citizen Anvil deals the hero target with the highest HP two melee damage. And Pyro Hammer, that's what's going off right now, I believe. Citizen Anvil deals the hero target with the highest HP two melee damage citizen hammer deals each non-villain target one fire damage all right yep choose form is good here and big change to this one you end up with a with a lot a lot of smaller targets with the enemy kind of pile up right yeah one of the things that happens a lot in in villain team mode like uh, someone like tempest does really well because Tempest, Tempest does a lot of area effect damage and so you know when there's a target rich environment having more villain targets out there is going to do really well yeah so I want to look and see what so you can see uh, on the right hand side here uh, we show all of the cards that the villains have together but you can also click on yeah. their portraits to filter it to just them uh, so we oh, should look and cool. we should look and see if those you want to bring up those cards for misinformation and La Capitan, Jeremy. Yeah. So altered fates here. We've got the first time a hero card enters play each turn. Misinformation deals the hero target with the highest HP two psychic damage. Excuse me, the hero with the highest HP two psychic damage. If damage dealt this Ooh. way reduces a target to under ten HP, destroy this card. And then we've got a world improved. Villain targets are immune to damage at the end of the of a hero's turn. If no cards were played and no powers used that turn, discard this card. And I honestly, I love the artwork on this. I'm just gonna leave it up real quick because the world you, improved. Yeah. Yeah, you've got like the Freedom Tower, but it's sort of like morphing into Misinformation Tower, and I think yeah, that is such yeah. a cool piece of artwork where she's like improving the world psychically or whatever, which is very cool. And then, of course, La Capitan brings out Chiquito, which is an anthropoid. The first time a player discards a card each turn, place it under this card. When La Capitan or this card would be dealt damage, move one card from under this card to the appropriate trash. If a card is moved this way, prevent that damage. But, of course, this is coupled with the fact that La Capitan, uh, in her gameplay, at the end of La Capitan's turn, if Chiquito is in play, La Capitan deals damage. Otherwise, move it into play. <laughs> so, like, getting rid of this card is... Very difficult. The monkey uh, comes back. The monkey comes back. So misinformation's cards are really frustrating. Um, if we play a card, we get hit, and we can't hit them. No. <laughs> so I'm thinking that I might just skip my turn to get rid of a world improved at least. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, villain targets are immune to damage. Seems worrisome. I'll be honest. Yeah. We are also all the nemesis of misinformation because uh, she has nemesis icons for all the freedom five mm, yes oh okay so uh, so she will actually be hitting us for three damage whenever we play a card I'm not sure if anyone can really I guess actually you have hypersonic assault so that's gonna help a lot for a little yep. while so I'm if just I gonna can deal damage which right but I'm gonna double skip so that you Great. world improved will be destroyed Yeah, and if um, you she double might play skip, world approved again. But. <laughs> yeah, she might play it again. Yeah. And actually, I did want to mention too, like if you skip and skip, meaning you use you play no cards and you deal and you use no powers, you get to draw an extra card on your turn. 
for those out uh, there who are not, uh, you know, super ver versed in the Sentinels world. All right, so here we should pay attention because the bottom of every deck will want to remember. Well, right, and again, just, just to sort of discuss the sort of dynamic here. Um, all the villains played their stuff for their setup, and then we had, uh, uh, excuse me, misinformation is, you know, sort of, we uh, set it up, and then Wraith went and destroyed the card, but then because it goes hero, villain, hero, villain, misinformation, it's now a villain turn, and she played the green grocer, which is a nemesis. Ah. At the end of misinformation's turn, this card deals the hero character card with the most ongoing cards in play, one energy damage and one fire damage. Then if Guise is in play, and he's not, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, right, so Jeremy's power, uh, you'll want to know what's on the bottom of your deck for Jeremy's power. So I have a one-shot grappling hook. And you have a one shot. That other card. So what does this guy do? The green grocer here. He's gonna do one and one to uh, someone because okay. we're all of the same amount of cards. So I have right. the highest. Just to say none. Yeah, I can take it because yeah. I have the highest. Okay. All right, I'm gonna start with my fleet of foot because that's the thing I like to do. The first time a hero card enters play each turn, misinformation deals the hero the highest two second damage. So that was going to happen no matter what I played. So um, if we ding me a few more times, I could even just start the game by kind of going into that uh, reduced damage mode right off the bat while I collect cards, and then we could then I'd stay low and kind of take a few more hits if you guys want. I don't know. That seemed it's a little bit of a pretty defensive opening move, and yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, I mean you have more ability to heal as well, so yeah. We'll see what we draw here. Hey, HUD goggles. Ooh, like we're targeting nice. HUD goggles and ooh, an Omni Cannon. Very nice. Yeah, the nice thing is if you can be in recharge mode and have the Omni Cannon in play. Hmm, yes. Because then you can just keep filling it. <laughs> All right, so, so it, I can. This this mode, then this, this game mode, you can see the villains don't have as high hit points, so you don't yeah. usually charge it up as much. Yeah, so yeah, cover so fire and hammer and shield is going to keep them from taking it, but the rest of them will take it, so that's good. Mainly, misinformation won't be hitting us for playing cards yes. for one round. Yeah. And she gets a bonus from that nemesis damage. But we do more to her. Well, well that's what I'm saying. It's like I got to deal yeah. her an extra one damage because we're nemeses. So I have a grappling hook on the bottom of my deck. Which is nice, but it dep I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what the is. second one is. And you have uh, lightning reflexes on the bottom of your deck. And Bunker has a turret mode. All right, Chat, let's keep track of this for us. Yeah, or we, can, yeah. Like, we can write it down. I mean, I feel like it's either going to be the Wraith or Tachyon here. Yeah. The Wraith is less likely to have another one shot to go with it, so I think Tachyon's probably a better bet. All right, we'll go with Tachyon. Hey, right. another Hypersonic Assault. Another hyper Two one-shots, right? So that's why they can both be put into play? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we can't double stop them from dealing damage, but we can at least deal a little bit more damage, plus an extra bonus one to misinformation. Right. Yeah. To that nemesis. Well, and usually one thing that often, you know, when you play, when you say, oh, I wasted that Hypersonic Assault, but like you probably were never gonna get to that hypersonic assault, like yeah. that. It's at the bottom of your deck. You're probably not gonna get to it before the end of the game. So. No. Yeah. Do I want to do two damage to Citizens Hammer and or Anvil, or should I just focus damage on misinformation? You think here? I would focus misinformation. Yeah, I guess that's... we should have let her. If we had let her hit you, then you would be doing way yeah. more damage. <laughs> yeah. But we didn't know. We didn't think about that and know yeah. that could happen. So. Yeah, I would. Yeah, focus on. Uh, Misinformation, yep, we get the nemesis that. bonus. And you get to play your other card. Yeah, should I do the other one? I guess I'll do the other one. Yeah, may as, well. may as well. I mean, they're burst cards, so get them in that trash. And what I'm saying there, for those of you who are not Sentinels people, is that Tachyon, one of Tachyon's mechanics is that the number of burst yeah. cards she has in her trash can sometimes power up her uh, nuke cards, which allow her to deal She's more She's like damage. a giant flurry of punches, right? Yeah. Exactly mm -hmm. right. All right, and so this card 
Chronological Hawk Spot is a really interesting one. So it play it reveals cards at the start. Yeah, so it's an ongoing at the start of each hero turn, reveal the top card of that hero's Thanks, deck. Sorry. If the revealed card is a one shot, discard it, otherwise put it into play, and that hero deals themselves three psychic damage. So you get a card play of something that could potentially be good, but at the expense of taking some damage. Alright. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm wondering about. I've got the Omni Cannon. I could bring it into play right away. Yep, that's not we, a bad do call. Do we have anything that's going to be nuking stuff if we bring it out? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be nuking. I'm I mean, sorry. misinformation definitely destroys equipment cards. Right. Um, uh, do, does she have anything that does it right now, or is it a. Uh, I'm less familiar with these decks, so. Yeah, I. She has one shots that destroy equipment, so she doesn't actually destroy as much equipment as the other misinformations. So okay, so um, I could I'm I'm kind of tempted to bring out the Omni Cannon now and see if I can stack it up nice and early. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Because if we're trying to burst misinformation, or I could grenade launcher and hit a bunch of targets. I mean, either one could work. Let me think here. So I could do two two one, which means I could kill Chiquito and hit misinformation. Yep. That's yeah, true. I mean, you could always get the Omnicon in the next turn. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, La Capitan just went, which means Chiquito will be out for the maximum amount of time if you take Chiquito out yeah. now. Yeah. And it's just, it's going to be part of the blast, so I think that might not be a bad call. Chiquito hasn't actually stolen a card yet because we haven't yep. right. discarded. Uh, so is it good to blast him now? I kind of feel like it is. Yeah, I would take him out. Okay. Uh, misinformation probably needs t two plus one for the uh, nemesis, yeah, right? I support that decision. It'll be down to ten. Yeah, Chiquito, the best case scenario against Chiquito is somewhere where that card is not going to end up in her trash, right? right. Yeah, like Haka. Haka, okay, exactly. Under savage mana. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, maybe the grocer for, for the one point? Uh, I wouldn't worry. He's not doing too much. He's it's only doing one much. and one damage. Yeah, so, I'd probably hit. Like I would Capitan. hit either the hammer, and, hammer and shield or the Capitan. Oh, let's do hammer and shield. Take that down because that's stopping so much. Any incidental kind of AOE and stuff is yeah. being stopped by that. So. Yeah. Cool. Good grenade launcher. Good to go. We have a battalion mechanic. Yeah, let's pop that open. Lord, thank you so much for the raid, by the way. Much appreciated. Yeah, so the battalion mechanic is at the end of the arm turn each structure regains one hp which there are none right now so that's fine right so they play cleansing flames uh and they yeah. can deal damage because we didn't get that hypersonic assault through that's just gonna happen did john just open a bottle of something it sounded like it It certainly it sounded like, like it glenn garriak uh, Ooh, nice. Yeah, I have a Dalwini 15 at home that I'm enjoying right now. That's nice. That sounds lovely. Indeed. And of course, Christopher's favorite. I have an Ardbeg 10. I'm actually almost done with that Ardbeg 10. So you have Aaron's favorite as well? No. Oben? Hey, utility Oh, boat. Oben, right, of course. Ooh, nice. And this information couldn't hit me, which I like. Oh, I want to play all my cards. Not all of them, but many of them. Uh, yeah, where's that card that's like, play all cards in your hand now? Come on, where's that card? Come on, Christopher. I think throwing knives and then micro-targeting next turn is going to be Uh, yep. sweet. Because so. that stacks the projectile damage, right? So you're oh, yes. doing, what, three, three, and three? Is three, that three, yeah. and three, yeah. That's My base one. power is melee, so I'm going to hit this information and chip away at that hammer and shield. And then throwing knives do the same thing. <laughs> two, <laughs> two angles, yeah. Just to yeah, they were talking about, the about how it's a, yeah. it's a new angle for them to see you on our stream from that way. <laughs> yeah. That's like how Skype time. does. It doesn't green screen. <laughs> you can see my green screen is on a track on the ceiling, which is why it's sometimes out of alignment. 
Very cool. Classy. You guys are getting a <laughs> behind the scenes look here. Away, so I don't... Yeah. Hey, there we go. Unshackled Destiny is basically what she saw. Oh yeah, that's right. If damage yes. would reduce the target to zero or fewer HP, prevent that damage, then destroy this card. She's a leaf on the wind. Watch how she soars. Uh, and that's actually yes, so that. any target. So, yeah. like, basically saves any one target that would get taken out. Oh, there was an Omni Cannon on the bottom of my de on the top of my deck. Oh yeah, what, what was the bottom of my deck? I missed it. You guys voted too fast. No. Oh, sorry. Oh, OJ just nailed it. Pay no attention to the curtain behind the man. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Do you guys remember what card was on the bottom of my deck? I don't. So Let's I rewind do. to the end of return. I want to see what it is. Cause... Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, Fine, John. I guess we can rewind. Click on me. Mega computer. Okay, so that won't match. Click insight. That's good to be on the bottom. Yep. And I think our modes li modes aren't limited. So actually, you, you don't have matching on the bottom either. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but you have equipment on the bottom. So, and I have an equipment on the so bottom. So most in play, do you want me to do me for the damage? Because uh, I got more heals. Oh, Green Grocer's Hypersonic Assaulted. Yeah, Hypersonic Assaulted. Yeah, that, that probably oh, shouldn't right. he can't deal actually. Damage, yeah. Green Grocer shouldn't ask if he can't deal damage. I will make a card. Beta testing live on the stream. All right, is there anything? Let's see here. We got Altered Fates. We got Chronological Hotspot and Unshackled Destiny. So that's the first time a hero card enters play. Ensure misinformation deals the hero circle with the highest use. Okay. And then we've got Chronological Hotspot, which is an interesting card, but still worthy of getting rid of an Unshackled Destiny if damage would reduce the target to zero HP. From that damage. I would definitely get rid of Altered Fates. Yeah, that's. I was looking at Altered Fates as probably the most likely because that deals damage sort of automatically. And Autom every time we play anything? Automagically. Like there. Like there, for instance. Uh, right there. All right, so we'll get rid of Altered Fates. I have no more cards to play. I have no cards. And... Um, so you, what was yours, Wraith, on your bottom of your deck? Uh, non-matching. Don't pick me. Don't pick you. All me right. as we'll well, pick at least. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look Two at that. Bursts. I'm going to quick and insight first. Nice. So I got an Accelerated Assault, Sonic Vortex, and Lightspeed Barrage. But I don't want to discard any of those. Oh, I have to discard two of them, right? I draw three, discard two. All right, so I'll get rid of Accelerated Assault since that's a burst card. And then, oh man, this I is I would tough. like to thank Vestas12 for subscribing. Thank Ooh. you. Vestas, Vestas. All right, so so interestingly enough, both of these or cards are the burst card. Tas. These Tas. The Sta. Oh yeah, that's a tough decision because- This is a uh, tough decision. So yeah, so Lightspeed, so these are the two burst card powered cards. So Lightspeed Barrage is Tachyon deals one target X melee damage where X is the number of burst cards in your trash. But then Sonic Vortex is ta Tachyon deals up to X targets three Sonic damage where X equals the number of burst cards in your trash. And what John is alluding to is the fact that like, Lightspeed Barrage is your nuke. That's your like deal maximum damage to one target. But Sonic right. Vortex in a villain's game, in a team, villains game is you can deal a lot of area damage so <sighs> i would right, probably discard sonic vortex though because you can use barrage to like take out anvil in one shot yeah and i have six burst cards mm -hmm. in my trash right now which is really powering that lightspeed barrage up pretty heavily so yeah i think i'll get rid of sonic vortex meaning you keep lightspeed in your hand right yeah, I keep light speed in the hand, but basically I, I did a thing that was draw three, discard two. So I had to discard yep. one of them, and it was like, what do I do? All right, yeah. uh, and then blinding speed. Definitely. What do we think? And shackle destiny or a chronological hotspot? I'm not too worried about the destiny because it's probably going to happen to the mechanic, or we can we can make it happen to the mechanic. Mm. Mm. Like you can use your grenade launcher to like trigger it to happen right. for the mechanic. Yeah. So all right, I'll get rid right. of the hotspot. It's pretty easy to get rid of. I mean, that hotspot was so chronological, I feel like I need to get rid of it. 
too chronological. It was just too chronological. I'm more into like Wi Fi hotspots. <laughs> <laughs> chronological Wi Fi hotspots. Yeah. All right. So Anomalous Shift comes out. That is oh, shuffle each is hero trash Tachyon. into the associated hero deck. So, <laughs> oh well. What are you going to do? Reveal wah, the top wah. card of each hero deck. Discard any one shots revealed this way. Then put their other reveal cards back on the top of their decks. All right. Well, maybe it will discard a one shot for you. Maybe. All right, so shuffle, 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 reveal cards. Impromptu Invention. Oh, man. Sucker Punch. All right, so that's Impromptu papers. Invention in my trash. That unit. sucks. My maintenance unit. So your maintenance unit stays there, I think. Yeah. And Chiquito returns. And the it monkey. makes me discard. So I'm going to discard, I think, Inventory Barrage and Chiquito. <laughs> it's going to steal See, it. Joshua V says, every time I wander away and come back, Mike is saying something that sounds like innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can believe that with this game. It's it's my brand, you know, <laughs> which also sounds like innuendo. <laughs> Where is your uh, brand? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's crappy dad jokes, uh, relentless Twitch student for self-promotion. That's nice. pretty much it. That's it. Beard. Beard. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm thinking it's time to bring out the Omni Cannon and load that beast up here. Uh, okay, so the power would be destroy all cards. So it's got no ammo right now. Uh, best thing I could probably do would be grenade. Mm -hmm. uh, Launch low okay. grenade. Okay. Yeah, so I'm thinking information, right? Yeah, pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, nemesis, kablam. There we go. Uh, to do the mechanic. See, I would probably lean hammer and shield on the second one here. Yeah, yeah to, to do, do more damage because the mechanic's got it. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we don't need. I don't know that we need to worry about the mechanic at least for now. Okay. Uh, and and all the villains so, are you know like Chiquitos for La Capitan, hammer and shield both reduce. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, you could. I mean, you could hit aim at Chiquito, and that gets rid of that card under Chiquito. That's true. Which is uh, okay. an inventory barrage. Would, would be dealt damage with this card to the appropriate trash. Yeah, let's do it. Give us back our thing, Chiquito, with your grenade. <laughs> Give us our barrage back, you jerk. You monkey jerk. And then I get my maintenance unit. Yay. There's my heels. Another mechanic comes out, which is fine since there's still no structures in play. They don't really do anything otherwise. Exactly. All right, so Cover Fire comes out, which removes the other Cover Fire and goes into play because it's a position. Double we can only be fire. in one position at a time. What's their position that I hate? Bastion. Bastion. Ugh. That position is the worst. Those guys punched me I'm right gonna, in the battle suit. I'm going to bring that <laughs> I'm going to bring that up. Oh, so Bastion. I know what's coming now. When this card enters play, destroy all other position cards. Reduce damage dealt to villain character cards other than citizen Anvil by two. That's why I hate this one. If Anvil is ever incapacitated, flip his character card, restore him to five HP, and destroy this card. Yeah, Bastion is no fun. He's tanking. All right, so I'm going to go with the micro targeting. So if I target uh, misinformation with my throwing knives, I would do four damage to her. But Unchuckle Destiny would prevent that damage and destroy this card. So to avoid that, I'm going to first use my base power uh, and target this function. battalion mechanic, which will cause the battalion mechanic to be miraculously saved. Monkey says, uh, I so really like the destiny, comic yeah. page flip trans uh, transitions. Thank you. Yeah, like one of the, yeah. actually, you know, speaking of, um, you know, we asked earlier in the stream, what does, Excuse me. What if a, what does a creative director do? You know, one of the things that we do when we sit down to work on a project is we say, "What is the sort of like key sort of creative concept behind this game?" And with Sentinels, it was, "How can we make this more comic book like?" You know, the the concept of this game is it is comics, it is superheroes. How you know any decision we make is run through that filter of is does this make it more or less comic booky and if it makes it more comic booky it's a positive if it makes it less then it's a negative and you know that page flip transition was one of those things where it was like this makes it feel like you're moving to the next page of a comic we like it let's do it yeah the layout of like the comic panels on the screen uh, all that sort of 
like the, we tried to make the UI look like a comic book to some extent as well. So, yep. hey, oh, there goes the shield. Are you voting for me? No, we're just suggesting. Just no, I, suggesting. I think I went AFK while you guys were talking. Oh, so. whoops. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to hit La Capitan, I think. Yeah, and actually, for those out there who are interested, so in our next game, Bottom of the Ninth, one of the, the, the similar thing of, like, does this support the comic book theme, what happened with Bottom of the Ninth was, does this feel like you're sitting and watching a baseball game? That was that was the creative concept that we came up with for that one. So, and oh, actually, so this is the incapacitate misinformation. Yeah, misinformation cool. was knocked out uh, while we were pontificating about creative... Throwing design. knives! So she got flipped over, which means her in-cap power is at the end of Misinformation's turn, each player discards one card and draws one card. So that's the phase that we are in now. So we all so get the to order matters card. here because Chiquito is going to take the first one. Right. Mm. So we don't want it to be Tachyon. Yes. Uh, it could go me. I, I'm, I'm not too stressed about it. So, so whatever card you discard, card. Chiquito is going to take it temporarily. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the adhesive foam grenade. It prevents... Um, the environment, but that doesn't seem too bad. So, yeah, it's not that you steal that. Yep. Draw dis and then, another decommission yeah, hardware. Really matter too much. I don't yeah, think. now it doesn't matter. All right, Wraith. Um, I think I can lose the utility belt. All the positions are somehow the worst. Yeah, <laughs> simultaneously <laughs> the worst. Mm, I'm going to discard my So the uh, frame one new to the mechanics. The equipment limited means we can't bring out two micro-targeting computers because that would stack crazy. That's yeah. just yeah. what that means. No quick insight with HUD goggles is nice. Yeah. So I only have two burst cards in my trash. So let's quick insight. So I draw a hypersonic assault, a hypersonic assault, and a pushing the limits. Ooh. Hmm. I would discard everything except hypersonic assault. But I mean cover fire is making that a bit annoying, but Yeah. Yeah, so I can discard I have to discard two here. Because your light speed barrage is not really doing much right now. It's I mean I mean I have two oh, burst cards shielding. in my trash. Yeah, that's fine. I I already have HUD goggles. I don't get the extra card draw from it, but I do get an extra play. Alright, so my pushing the limits went under Chiquito. Chiquito. Uh, Lightspeed Barrage, that's fine. And then I'll play one of these Hypersonic. Right, but as soon as you play Hypersonic Assault, those two cards are going to... Actually, yeah, you won't actually get to hit <laughs> them because of Chiquito. Yeah. So maybe that wasn't the best call. I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's much we can do about it at this point. So. Yeah, and I don't know if the other way is a better call either. So. Yeah. I get to hit Citizen Anvil. Oh, you Anvil, did hit please. Anvil. Yeah. Because Yay! Because the, the Hammer and Shields are gone. So yeah, so at least Anvil's not gonna punch I mean, us. Hammer anytime. hit me back, but what are you gonna do? I mean, look, we've already got one of the three villains out of the out of the way, so. Yeah. All right, we have no idea what's on the bottom of anyone's deck because misinformation. All right, Tachyon, what do you got? Wah, wah. Blinding speed and pushing the limits. At least it's another burst card in my trash to power up the card that I discarded. So that's good times. <laughs> but I got a fleet of foot, so that's okay. And the Capitan's reshuffling for you anyways. <laughs> oh, anomalous shift. Shuffle each hero trash into the associated deck. Reveal the top one card again, huh? yeah. each hero deck. Discard any one shots revealed this way. Then put the other revealed cards back on top of the deck. Ugh. Raise reshuffles. Tack and reshuffles. Bunker reshuffles. And actually, that hurts Bunky Bunker, too, because didn't you have you have two decommissioned hardwares? So yeah. I believe so, yeah. Not now, though. Uh, does it matter here? You have recommissioned all your hardwares. That's right. I really want to know what's up with the creepy carnival guy that's getting throat jab. Like, what is up with that? <laughs> oh, he's uh, from the Dreamers deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, one of her projections. Okay, do Omni I want to move up to three power. cards under Omni Cannon? Yes, I do. <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of, uh, of hardware here that I can't actually do much with. Okay, select one, two, and then what's power source do again? Let's see here. Uh, you may destroy this card if you do me use an additional power. Uh-huh, and let's recharge mode here. Destroy mode cards. You may draw an additional card during draw phase, reduce damage dealt. 
Uh, I'm thinking recharge mode for right now because I kind of need to be doing damage more than that. So now the Omni Cannon is uh, primed because it can have only three, or is it three per it's turn? It's unlimited. Yeah, it's three per turn, so you can just keep powering it up every turn if you need to. Wow. All right, there you go. That sounds, that sounds very magical. I think the maintenance unit's going to come into play at least, just so I have it because I'm getting hurt. Not too bad. Uh, whew, what do you guys think? Probably stack the Omni Cannon up a little higher, huh? And then start grenading. Does that feel... Yeah, I would probably like, grenade at this point. Well, let's see, 14, 13, I could draw a card, too, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you could hit Le Capitan with the Omni Cannon for six. That's true. Ooh, would that, that would do six? How come? Yeah. Well, it's two oh, per two card. two times. Yeah. Might be good for Jeez. us to focus down Le Capitan and then... And then just do anvil and hammer, yeah, anvil. hammer and anvil. Okay. All right. Or unload into Chiquito. <laughs> I mean, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> Yeah, the only problem with monkey. unloading a Chiquito is that he keeps coming back. I, I think know, we can know, kill a Capitan before Chiquito gets to do anything. Right. Such a cheeky monkey. Cool. Let's, uh, only because you said that, um, I can just destroy all of those, right? Yeah. And Capitan. Yes, let's confirm. There we go. Yeah, I will be able, might be able to take her out on my turn, or it might be on Jeremy's turn. Nice. Cool. Good, good. Right, good job. Assuming Brood comes we don't out. discard too many cards. The hero target with the highest one look like melee and lightning. Yeah. Or if they don't play Bastion, good, they didn't. Yeah, Cleansing Flame. Citizen Hammer deals each non-villain target one fire damage. Each villain target Farewell, regains Farewell, Battalion one Botanic. Those mechanics are not getting having a good time. No. Well, they have like two hit points, right? Yeah. They don't have any armor. They're just mechanics, man. They're working the Death yeah. Star, you know, trying to like <laughs> keep things moving. And all of a sudden, some rebels come along. Dead bodies keep plummeting down the shaft, yeah. Oof, it's like a split uh, vote. Chiquito, always at maximum. All right, Wraith, what do you got? You got two powers per turn. And throwing knives, oh yeah. And stun bolt. Is stun bolt a projectile as well? It is. Yeah, ooh, so that's boosted too. Yeah, micro-targeting computer is just about one of the best cards in the game. Yeah. In terms of what it can do for the Wraith. I mean, it's so, like, if you can get the Wraith set up, she's pretty unstoppable. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I only could do. I thought I might. I thought he had a razor ordinance, so she's still at eight. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but who knows what you'll end up drawing, and you'll be able to hit her with uh, hypersonic, anyways. So right, Chiquito so is going to steal a card here. Uh, who? What do I have to discard? Yeah, Chiquito can steal one of my cards. I have. Things I don't care too much about. So Chiquito steals one per turn. Is that the idea? So we're having misinformation make three discards happen. Is that the idea? Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, misinformation yeah. makes each of us discard and draw, and Chiquito takes. But the it's first. her turn. So there's only one instance of Chiquito going. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's saying to me, Tachyon, discard a card, and I'm in the worst of all possible scenarios where I could discard Fleet of Foot, which is a burst card, but it allows everyone to, to draw a card, or I could discard Hypersonic Assault. Um, is my Hypersonic You should discard Ass Hypersonic Assault. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think that's going to get... Is that going to hit more than just one of them? We, we can make it hit Le Capitan. But I would still discard Hypersonic Assault. Yeah, I hate discarding a non-burst card, but man, Fleet of Foot is just yeah. so so good. I feel like I can't ever discard that card. I can load cards directly into a gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're running low on them. I know. I have noticed that. Yeah, for well, anyone joining though, us this, this late in the game, back. literally two hours into the stream, our guest this evening is oh, Mike wow. Laidlaw. He is the creative director for Dragon Age from a small little company out of uh, this little podunk town in Canada. 
Uh, it's called Bioware. <laughs> the, the the town is called Edmonton, Alberta. Um, you might have heard of it. Um, Do they and... even have computers up there? <laughs> I heard they just got the railroad. All also right. known as Electronic <laughs> Arts. <laughs> yeah, also known as EA. All right, so I'm going to Fleet of Foot, and we're going to get Grappling Hook, Synaptic Interruption, and Black Cannon. And I get to, ooh, let's see here. You get to play both, so. I have no burst cards. Oh, I get to play both. All right, so I'm going to play Yeah, but so card. don't bother playing Sonic Vortex. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, there's nothing, there's no Oh, wait, no, there is a burst card in your trash. So you could do, you could use hit one thing. Oh, because I just played the thing, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, We're focusing on Le Capitan still, right? Yeah, but yeah. Taquito's got a card, so it's not going to do anything. Oh, so. yeah. Mm. I would just save it. Yeah, I'm going to save it. And then I'm, but I have a grenade that can't get that card out. But maybe yeah, we'll have under two that things monkey. underneath. We won't. Wah, wah. <laughs> Don't forget the evil with evil dice monkey. The evil is very important. Evil space monkey, yeah. Yeah, a dice monkey is just a dice monkey, but an oh, evil. Oh, it's dice a monkey. throwback. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, that's pretty rad. All right, <laughs> the shield generator comes <laughs> out. That's a structure. One time we put in some special effects. Yeah. All right. Good time. So, what does that card do exactly? All right, it I'll pop that up. Environment take a full turn. Yeah. Oh, okay. In, like right. immediately. Yeah. So throw back. The environment takes a full turn now, out of turn order sequence. During that turn, villain targets are immune to damage from environment cards. And she has another one that lets her take a full turn out of sequence as well. Oh, man. That was fun to program. Hmm. I mean, I didn't do the programming of that of the underlying part. I did the programming of the special effect. Yeah, and that special effect, that's a perfect example of the kind of thing that a creative director might have... Uh... Mm -hmm. Some input on. Except I'm the creative director and the guy who does it. <laughs> yeah, we were actually we were actually talking about how you know like what would our thing sort of track to. Um, in general, I would probably be the executive producer slash producer, whereas John would be the producer slash director of um, you know if we were looking at it from the through the lens of like a movie studio. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I did programming for that, but uh, Jennifer did some of the visual stuff too, so. Okay, Chiquita will block. He's only got one card though, right? Yeah, so now you can hit okay. Luck Epi 10. Yeah, the important that thing from that point of view is that the executive producer, as is typical in Hollywood, is someone who uh, gets a paycheck and doesn't really do much. <laughs> <laughs> can I hit uh, Anvil? Is you can hit Anvil. Or? And, but you will be hit for two damage if you do. So it's up okay. to you if you think that's it. Uh, or is like shield generator maybe a better hit? Yeah, they, you can't hit the environment because they the shield generator is protecting them. Oh, right, because it would reduce itself to one by one. Yeah, so I might yeah. as well hit anvil. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I can take the hits. I got I got more than ten health. There you go. I mean, I, I mean, smoking I did a little bit. Have more Only than the last thing. I do HP have my maintenance from the maintenance maybe too. <laughs> Yeah, the executive but producer is also the person that occasionally pops his head in and says, I think this should be like this. And then the team has to go, oh, the executive producer told us we had to do this thing. The interesting interesting thing for us is we have we have a, a, an interesting line at EA between executive and senior producers. So they are both they both can be the leader of the project. Um, but because EA is a like public trade company, when the executive is literally like you're a vice president or higher. So it creates kind of an interesting um, huh, no. division between senior producer and executive producer. Interesting. Yeah. Of the because once you become a VP, you become of the executive mm -hmm. in, a, in a very specific like I don't know. Right. You transcend levels. Uh, <laughs> you become like part the of the ruling campaign, class. Yeah. <laughs> the ruling class, yeah. exactly. You've moved from well, the Morlocks to the Eloy. Yeah, yeah. Mark Darrow, who's my boss, is an executive. As far as I can tell, the main benefit for that is that you have life insurance um, paid for you <laughs> by the company, uh, which means he has to do a physical where he runs till he throws up every year. And that sounds amazing. I, yeah. 
Nice. At Hem Library, it's more like Jeremy and I are mommy and daddy. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. you fight. Yeah, and actually, uh, yeah, mommy. <laughs> the chat sometimes will the chat will definitely fight. agree with you that like sometimes mommy and daddy daddy fight and it makes everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know the programmers are at the top of the stairs. <laughs> Uh, what, what am I doing? <laughs> I thought I was gonna have Le Capitan dead. Actually, I will have Le Capitan dead. The monkey is clear. We, I, I repeat, we have cleared the monkey. The monkey will be cleared. That's right. So, I want to destroy that position card, but I don't have Tempest or Urgent Adept, so I can't. I could play Combat Stance and then just react reaction damage things. I think I'm going to do that, unless we feel like it's time for smoke bombs. I mean, actually, smoke bombs is probably not a bad idea as well. Mm, true. We're all pretty low. Is that is that whenever? Like, every time? Oh, yeah, yeah, whenever a villain card, anytime, not just the first time a turn or anything. Nice. So, if, it's one of the nice things is if we're all at, like, equal hit points, or, like, and then something hits everything, then yeah. If it's one damage, it just doesn't happen, so... Well, a lot of the stuff that's, like, the two damage from, you know, uh, Anvil's counter and stuff's nice, too, to drop that to one. Yeah, exactly, so... But then, Combat Stance, I would... If, whenever Hammer hits me, I would hit him back, which is nice. Mm. Oh, counterattack, counterattack! Yeah, I'll go Combat Stance. We'll see how that goes. And... Jeremy... Yes. You you have prevent the next damage on you. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you want? So I could stun bolt hammer potentially and reduce that sort of reaction damage he's doing. If you um, can kill La Capitan. Oh wait, oh, yeah. but no. We 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 get to a misinformation's turn, then Chiquito will steal a card. Right. So if you do bolt and knives, you'd kill La Capitan, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's. I'm just gonna do that. So we'll seal not. The deal. We'll seal the deal exactly. <laughs> to seal the deal. So I'm gonna hit Anvil, and then Hammer's gonna shoot me, and then I'm gonna shoot. Hammer. Hyatt, Hyatt, Hyatt. <laughs> Combat stance reaction. Kabam. And there goes the Capitan. All right. At a time. All right. All we got to deal with is the hammer and anvil now. That's all. Come on. They're just well, a hammer true. and an anvil. I could have targeted Tachyon. Uh, I love the name of this card so much. Yeah. What are you going to do this turn? Eh, suit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there is nothing being stolen here, so we can choose for me. Oh, yeah. That's right. No monkey this time. No chicky monkey. Yeah, oh, he went from out. a micro to a mecha. I could have threw knives at Tachyon with the redirection and then use a stun bolt on hammer, but oh well. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have 19 <sighs> HP but against but their... But 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 like what 31 hp i feel like we're all right all right yeah so, so sonic vortex i've got two burst cards so i can hit both of them there is a bug where uh the hp of anvil there hammer is not showing up right so make sure to look at his card say it again the there's a bug in the current build where it's always showing 17 for hammer but he's actually at 12. oh oh thank you yeah so 12 and 14 so there's actually only 20 Six against mm -hmm. our. What did I say? Twelve plus seven, nineteen. That's right. fixed in next build. All right. You get to see yeah. something before anyone else here on the wonderful. Oh Halo yeah. Stream. A bug. All right, All so bugs. I can hit. Oh, Choose wait. hammer. You'll still get to hit him. Yeah, I was gonna say scorching snap. <laughs> let's me miss, miss one, but I get to at least hit him for one, and then I can sonic vortex, to both of them. Anvil. All right, boom, boom. 
Yeah, cover fire, can't see. You can Sonic Vortex to yourself if you want, but I don't know if that's worth it. You might want to keep that synaptic interruption for when something actually tries yeah, to hit you. Yeah, I'm going to keep that. Yeah, but by all means, I feel like the environment hasn't been super active this time around. We've gotten lucky. Yeah, it's the gunners. But... Yeah, the mobile defense platform is not too crazy an environment. I was like, the, was the Ooh, silver I got a second like, synaptic interruption. Ooh. And I killed that Italian gunner because he was under two. And I drew another synaptic. It's your light speed barrage fun. now. Yeah. Hmm. One here, I'm going card. Oof. Yeah, I mean, I have two well, synaptic you... interruptions. Yeah. But those are really good cards. Uh, I can discard two cards. So choose my card. And then I will discard two cards instead. And actually, I'm going to play Mega Computer on my turn because environment mostly does one damage. Mm. Yeah, sure. Okay, do I move through under Omnican? And I sure don't. Okay, turret mode. Oh, destroy all their mode cards. Yeah, player draw cards. We can use the additional power every turn, and you increase your damage by one. Mm. That's pretty and good with state monster and maintenance unit. Yeah. Yeah. Or a loaded Omni Cannon. Yeah, actually, will you be able to kill Anvil? Mm. Not quite. How much does he do? Uh, well, you'll do seven from Omni Cannon, and then three. Yeah, you'll do right. ten damage. Not quite. <laughs> yeah, not. Well, I could quite. omni. I could omni and heal. Maybe not a bad call given how low I am. Yeah, well, I, I would grenade. I wouldn't have yeah. a problem with omni and heal. Yeah, I think omni and heal. All right, omni. omni. And heal. It's the new Netflix and chill. <laughs> omni yeah. and heal. There you go. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, babe, you want omni and chill? Okay. Get rid of these guys here. All right, and then. Uh, Anvil, right? Yeah, because I think Anvil is probably good because if we uh, if we hit if we kill Hammer, then Anvil will bring him back. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let's hit Anvil. Yay Even. for turret mode. Okay, and then let's heal up with the maintenance unit. Bada 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 bada. This card you don't is get to draw serious. cards anymore. Yeah, whatever. I'm cool. <laughs> I've got a grenade launcher. Any You're all set. That this if, guy I, that if comes I, out? I had already previously discovered flat cannon, but having like flat cannon and grenade launcher is just like <laughs> double fisting DPS. All right. Uh, may as well hit me because I'll hit it back. All right. Combat stance. Oh yeah, battalion brute. Try this. <laughs> Ah. All right, so we got 13 HP. We got to chew through. I feel like we're in a pretty good position. Yeah. Make that 17. That's all right. We're still in a pretty good position. Hey, the second highest HP is the shield generator, not bunker. Definitely yeah. the shield generator. Until Hammer starts shooting the engines. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do I want make a computer? Your face shield, Jen. I'm way weaker than it. Maybe I want some... I'm going to play smoke bombs first. Yeah, because smoke bombs going to save me from... Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stun bolt hammer. So that'll stop him from hitting you with fire? Or something? Yeah, well, it won't stop him, but it'll, 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 he'll hit me for one, which smoke bombs redirects. Uh, right. So... And then it go, will go to zero. And then I'm going to hit hammer and anvil. Zero. It's feeling and pretty good. Kill that battalion brute who's been hitting us. Don't be and such a brute, because, man. Because of the sky deck, it goes to the bottom of the environment deck instead. All right, I don't think it matters here. Oh, it's just here. Not discarded. It's just back in there. Hey, discard one of those eyepieces. Draw throwing knives. 
All right. Hey, I discarded my barrage. only card, and I got a lightspeed barrage. And you can't. You have no cards to discard, and you can't draw. So even if you had cards, misinformation would make you just keep discarding them. All right. I have fanatics talking about the the four genders: he, she, they, and evil. Nice. <laughs> I like nice. that. The, I like that none of the other three are evil. Right? That that creates an exclusive. That's pretty rad. <laughs> All right, so I can deal five damage. Should I sink that into hammer, or should I just get anvil out of the way? I would hit hammer, and then uh, Mike can kill both of them with grenade launcher. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I figured getting hammer low was probably the way to go. Oh, it's only four, not five, but still. All right, let's let's experiment. Well, maybe you'll be lucky. Yeah, let's experiment and see what we get here. Ooh, interesting. All right, so let's quick insight. Yeah, and you won't actually get to play anything, Eruption, though. hypersonic, and fleet of foot. Ah, oh, that's too bad. All right, yeah, so I'll get rid of uh, the hypersonic and I guess the other synaptic since I've got two. But hopefully we're not going to actually survive to the next turn anyway. I don't think it matters what I get rid of here. <coughs> Well, HUD goggles. Um, I assume we're trying not to get rid of turret mode, right? Uh, I like it. I'll yeah, I can. I'm a fan. I'm fine to discard again, so you can pick combat stance. All right. And throwing knives, and yeah, I think I'll get rid of that mega computer. Given the environment's empty now, yeah. Destroy turret mode. Hell no. <laughs> it's doing the job. Okay, so should I be hitting anvil first, then hammer? Is anvil soaking damage? Or is that what cover fire is doing? Uh, cover fire, yeah. Cover fire doesn't act like anvil doesn't actually have to be there. Yeah. Um, but I think you can take out anvil and then... Um, you can hurt hammer, but you won't be able to kill right. him. It'll so, be three, and then he'll have one left. Two to hammer, yeah. So monkey asks, "Is the wraith Batman? Seems like Batman to me." And yeah. <laughs> Jangaro she... bait Asner's yeah. basically yes, and that is yeah. basically she's a rich the... heiress who fights crime. Yeah, yeah. She and Batman have the same archetype, but they're not the same. <laughs> yeah, there yes, there are definitely share, some uh... things about them that are very very different. But in terms of mechanically speaking, rich person with gadgets. Who fights evil? The answer is yes. Yeah. Batman wishes he were the wraith. I think that <laughs> yes, true. that is exactly right. <laughs> yeah, so here uh, I think you probably just want to stop. Well, unless... Uh, is the redirect from Tachyon, is that a... Is it, like, above a limit? Like, is it three or higher? Am I remembering Actually, right? I know what you want to do. You want to... It is three or uh, higher, yeah. You send the second one at Tachyon... And then oh, I sent send... the shit. I sent the second one already over. Yeah, we can rewind. You want to rewind? Yeah, let's yeah. Like rewind so that we can finish this right. This now. is a, this is sort yeah. of a trick. All right, so, cool. Yeah, so you can hit so, anvil. Grenade launch. All right, so we hit anvil, kill him. Grenade launcher into turret mode. Kabam! See you, buddy. Okay, and then yeah, then my second one I want to hit Tachyon to redirect yeah, it. Yeah, right? you target Tachyon, then you'll be able to hit. Hammer as your third target. Right. Ah. Yeah. Because the turret mode will cause synaptic interruption to fire, which is cool. Very nice. Yeah. Because of the damage boost. And Tachyon selects hammer, which means it goes to. Oh, wait. Maybe I'm, I probably misremembered that. Oh, actually, that's, that's okay. That's okay, though, because hammer's down to good. one, so. You want that in the trash, anyways. Oh. Wait, it, why can't it, 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 ends, it ends up considering what the actual target that got. Oh, hit. because it's yeah, 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 okay, all right. Because Fair I enough. ended up being the second target. I forgot how right. that works. Yeah, because the point just directed pants, this, but the one I actually did damage to was. Okay. I think the only thing that makes sense is maintenance unit. Yeah, yeah, or draw a card, but like I can't, so. Yeah. That seems uh, not that useful. Omni cannon won't do one damage because Susan Hammer has minus one. It would right. do one damage, but other, but. Yeah. I think we probably got this unless they play Bastion. If this card is reduced to zero for your HP, everyone dies. It's wildfire. 
Well, if they didn't play Bastion, we win. That's basically... Yep. Haha! Right, so Stunbolt is just gonna stop this. Good job, Stunbolt. Healing? What? Unacceptable. Stockfoot says, I thought Hammer and Anvil were immune to each other's damage. They are. I'm not sure why you thought they weren't, or what. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that you can destroy propulsion systems and not lose the game. It's a bad <laughs> zero hit point. Yeah, so destroy is point. different than reducing to zero HP. Yeah. Those are different mechanics. And then I'm going to hit hammer, and then I'm going to target Tachyon. And you can redirect if you want. I guess I'll redirect it. For the win! <laughs> and there goes our last villain. And we have won. Victory! Victory is ours! That was that out. was a, a really fun team game, actually. Yeah, yeah. solid. We showed off uh, Citizens Hammer and Anvil, Misinformation, and La Capitan. All three new team villains from the upcoming Villains of the Multiverse expansion, which is coming when, John? Soon. Soon. So for anyone who missed uh, the opening of the show tonight, uh, next week, Tuesday, I believe June 13th at 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll be doing the listening party for Villains of the Multiverse, continuing on to the regular stream at around 7-ish. Uh, we also had a super special guest tonight, Mike Laidlaw from BioWare, uh, creative director of Dragon Age. Where can people find you online, Mike? Uh, if you look on uh, twitter.com slash Mike underscore Laidlaw or at the exact same address except for Twitch. All right. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're looking for more fun soundtrack stuff, the new soundtrack for Villains, uh, excuse me, for Vengeance was released last week. You can check that out. If you buy it from Steam, Handelabra.com, or Bandcamp, you'll get a special bonus that allows you to cut together your own awesome Team Villain victory track. Uh, I wanted to point out that with just Vengeance, there are more. There are 300 possible combinations, and once we release Villains. There will be more than 384,000 possible villain <laughs> victory songs. songs. That's without any other mixes that That's you That's without added. adding in your own <laughs> yeah. dubstep, you know, dance beat <laughs> or anything like that. So uh, wow. check that out. That's why we're not releasing a soundtrack with every possible combination because that is that would be a crazy, crazy soundtrack. Uh, all right, so th I think that's going to do it for another episode of Sentinels Live. As you all know, Sentinels of the Multiverse is the only cooperative comic book card game that you should be playing thank you for joining us we do, do this every week at 7 p.m eastern time sometimes at 6 p.m like next week if you do enjoy the show please like share follow and subscribe sentinels of the multiverse is currently available on ios android and steam and always in good old analog cardboard and ink and you can find more about the uh more info about the game and as well as download the free demo at sentinelsdigital.com i'm jeremy I am John. And we are saying good night. And that's Mike. Thank you again for joining <laughs> us, Mike. Uh, Thanks, and uh, we're saying good night from the multiverse. We will see you guys next week. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Take care, everyone, on my stream. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself.